It was just kind of like, hey, if you're going to keep parking there, we're going to park over <laughs> here. Thought I, I thought for sure I smelled alcohol over in this one area. He's like, no, I took a dump over no, there. No, no, that wasn't. That wasn't. <laughs> that was me. No, that was me. That was me. I was, I was just peeing my morning coffee. Yeah. <laughs> A Hunter Podcast is brought to you by Deer Grow. Heck yeah, man. Dude, we put a lot of food in the ground every year, you know, seemingly more and more, and uh, we have a ton of fun with it during the off season. Uh, there's some struggles that come with it too, though, right? Obviously, the back of my truck is evidence, you know, right now. It's mm-hmm. a couple of weeks after uh, I jackknifed, you know, a 4,800 pound uh, material spreader, you know, as I was coming down, and it's just it was too much weight for my truck there. But, you know, all those struggles aside, you know, dude, Deer Grill really has been a staple for our food plotting process uh, for several years now. Yes, we like to put lime and fertilizer on the plots, you know, if we can, but there are some that it's just we're not able to get to them or it's not feasible for us to get out of state with that stuff and so deer grow is kind of the, the quick and easy but still super effective option for us to be able to get the most out of those food plots that we can every year yeah, and i mean we're guilty of over analyzing things just like everyone else but that's the best part about deer grow is that it's going to create healthier soils which in turn makes better food plots and the fact is is we can simply spray plot start or plot till when we put the seed in the ground and then when that plant starts to grow we hit it with boost and we know that we walk away when we come back it's going to be a great looking food plot for anybody that's looking to try deer grow if you use the code hunter15 that's h-u-n-t-r-1-5 at checkout for deergrow.com and save 15 percent on any of your deer grow products it's a great way to get started on this and just see what the results are for yourself better food plots bigger deer Hey, we're back hey on our podcast bonus edition Bonus up. Episode bonus. 148. Bonus yeah. edition. Hey, thank you guys for listening. Uh, if you like our podcast, uh, give us a follow on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, wherever you guys listen. The subscriptions really help. Please leave us a comment. We do read through those from, from time to time, and uh, we appreciate you guys. Yeah. Good or bad, we read through. <laughs> from time to time, like I said. Good ones we usually <laughs> respond to. Bad ones, not so much. Uh, yeah. No, uh, we've been trying... So after, I guess with this one coming out, um, your bonus episode on your North Dakota hunt should have hit already. Mm-hmm. Um, Today, tonight, as we're recording. Yep. And so we're going to, you know, it, not every Thursday, but as we have like more eventful hunts, I think these bonus apps are going to come in, play you're, with- You're never going to see them coming. Yep. But every couple <laughs> Thursdays, we might hit you with a whammy. Yeah. <laughs> it's hunting season. Why not? Mm-hmm. We got lots of shit to If we got something about. to, you know, we lots of shit get on about, about, we might, yeah, we might as well. It's funny. I was when we we're doing that intro. It's the well, it's September twenty first. So I'm going to the cabin this weekend. It should be my first hunt in the stand. I haven't been in the stand. Um, and uh, like a couple of the blinds down there. I went in last time, and I was like, oh, it's like feels good. I like look up and like giant wasp nest like, oh, yeah. right up in there. Oh yeah. So she's like, I got you like eight cans of wasp spray. I'm like, yeah, yeah you're gonna need perfect. it. Perfect. I put up some perfect. of that um <laughs> that tent that we bought. Yeah. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. pretty clutch. On the windows. Really easy to put up. I, I just, like that. I just, because I, I don't know. I just, it was hard to make time for because it's like, I'm just. Uh, oh, dude, I was in the blind. Harlan's hunting and I'm like spraying and like. Yeah. It was really easy. So like uh, for our listeners, we, we just bought um, like tent, window tent. Yeah, off it's like of, film. Off Amazon. So yep. It's really cheap. Like I paid. 12 bucks. 12 bucks for a roll and it comes with a. Um, a, a little bottle sprayer that you fill squeegee. up with soap water and a like a plastic squeegee and, and a you, razor. Yeah, and a razor for cutting mm-hmm. it. So all you do is you, s- you spray the inside of the window and there's it peels off. Yep. Which I didn't know the first time. I was just like, it's not sticking. Peel it off, stick it on, squeegee it down. Yep. Cut the outline. Cut the outline. And it's you're good, you're good to go. Yeah. Yeah. And it, so on the outside, it looks like a mirror reflection. Yeah. Um, but in terms of being able to move in some of those box blinds and stuff, yeah, clutch. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I've got that in my muddy. I've got to get them in the Hawk here too. I don't have them on that one yet, but way, way cleaner, nicer. I never had any issues with them in the winter time for what it's worth either. Well, what was happening with our blind kits is like, they're, they're great. That's ideal. It totally blacks you out. Um, but over time, it seemed like that some of the sticky stuff, the sun beating on those windows, it's just hot in there. there. There is no adhesive that can you know and so no. they start to over time they'll start to Pull. and so you can buy new blind kits or you know we just figured this would be easier and, yep. and who knows it might do the same thing over time but it's mm-hmm. you know for now that's yeah what, that's what we're trying i blew a window out of those last year with harlan i know did you shoot it uh the cam of the crossbow hit it yeah that'll and do like it. exploded yep. yeah i moved i got well that you know when we were filming that commercial and stuff that blind that i got moved over to mm-hmm. uh raise they've accepted it 
pretty pretty quickly. I know yeah, that I, buck was running right in front of it, walking. Yeah, I got some bucks. Yeah, Nick, you were there. I got nice. some bucks walking. You were there. I was there. You saw it. You, you know. saw it. Tell you him. know what I mean. <laughs> Tell him what you Tell told me. <laughs> Tell him. No, that's not what you told me. <laughs> Don't you lie yeah. to me. So yeah, that's that. That'll be nice, dude. I freaking uh, not like not to to brag. I've got a lot of bucks right Hang now. Hang in. I, probably, I would assume the amount of acorns you have, because typically by now has to have something. To is do when you it. start to see those deer leave your place. Yeah. Because beans are turning. I, I, I can't recall ever having as many mature bucks as I feel like we do right now. And I mean, we're a week away. And new ones showing up. Yeah. Which is it's usually the opposite. Yeah, usually they're gone. Yeah. Oh, here, by the way, uh, tell me what you think of this. Remember that buck I sent you this morning? Yeah. Uh-huh. So here he is. Looks mature to me, right? Not, not a super high score. Yeah, we got like a four-year-old probably. 130-something. Mm-hmm. I think this is him. No pictures of him last year. None. Remember this year? Mm-hmm. This is the one that Dale and I passed on out of the... I think any of his a three-year-old last year? I think he's three there. I think he's probably five this year. Wow. That's him. Yeah. For, for sure. Yep. Same area. That wow. I don't know what's more wild. It's just that he like that he's there or that I've had no pictures of him last year at all. I don't None. know where they go, man. I mean, <clears throat> you know, we've talked about this before where I think we write some of these deer off. Like if we don't see him for a season, I mean, I, I assume a deer's dead. That's just how yeah, I, that's I how did, I grew I up. That's, that's how it's been for the years. But, you know, more and more running cameras and, and having cameras out just year round in some of these places, you know, you quickly realize like a deer will show up and you're like, wait a minute. I've gone back two, three years. That one behind the house that showed up again this year that I hunted last year. I haven't had a picture of that deer since like 2018 Mm -hmm. or 17. Mm -hmm. It's like no pictures. And then last year it shows up and I'm like, wait a minute. It's funny, man. It's like an eight year old deer. It's, it's hard not to, you know, want to believe that they just, they live on your farm and that's, and that's where they're at. And if they're gone, they're dead. They're wild animals. Like the, the more, the more, uh, frankly, cameras is what's done it for me as well as hunting, different area you know especially public land vast mm-hmm. acreage and realizing how much uh you know a deer's core area can change from year to year or even uh within the year it's like man these things could like what do we have to justify to say that they're dead like, i think if, that's the mystery is there unless you find movements them. of like you know okay he's been here let's say as a two or three year old and then he disappears you assume he's dead for years a couple years it's just like as that deer ages, he gets wise. There's certain things that he realizes or needs or, or wants to I do. I think it's social pressure. I and, think it's yeah, the main thing. Then they leave, and then they can come back if they want. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think it's so, it I think it's social pressure. I mean, definitely like crop rotations and availability of food will will, mm-hmm. will affect that. But if they have all that, I think social pressure is a is yeah. a big factor. Because you'll see those those two and three year olds tolerate other two and three year olds pretty well. Oh yeah. But when you get in that four and five year old class, especially this time of year, they don't want to tolerate each there other. There can only much. be so many. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they just keep displacing, 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 and then eventually one of them gets killed or dies or whatever, and that gap opens up again. Mm. I'm actually back. I'm really anxious to see at Glasgow. Which funny enough, it's it's. It's, it's funny how these properties differ so much. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, that's where I've killed my bucks the, the past two years. Uh, not a pi- no pictures of shooters. And I have two beautiful clover plots. Like, and I just know, like, I know it's going to turn on. Yeah. Like, end of October, November. Yeah. Um, so last year we had two, there was two mature A points that were both low scoring, super mature deer. Uh, we, we might've hunted for them like once or twice and just mm-hmm. whatever didn't work out. Um, as luck would have it, they got hit by a truck. I, they probably legitimately did get hit by a truck, but <laughs> maybe, maybe they got shot. At, who knows? All I know is I got, I got pictures of them in the back of truck. Beds. In the back of a truck. Uh, and supposedly were hit by trucks. But so those deer are gone. And and honestly, I was at first I was like, oh, that sucks. You know, those deer were on the hit list or whatever. But you know, after, over some time, I was like, well, maybe that's a good thing because dude, there were some slammer three year olds yeah, in there, and those I, bully bucks would have pushed them out for, for sure. sure. Yeah. For sure. So, yeah. like, I'm I'm kind of anxious to see if what fills the void. Fills that in. Yeah, it's wild, man. And and this is the time. You know, we're filming this on whatever the 21st, and um, airs the 28th. So, like, right now, even for the next two weeks, I mean, there's a lot of big shifts happening, um, depending on where you're at in the country. Then it kind of settles in, and then you know, obviously, late late October, early November, <laughs> crazy. You want to talk corn real quick? Sure. Because why not? Always. So, because it's funny, because we we talk whatever we you know we we criticize it a lot, yeah, right. But we've also been pretty transparent about the fact that, that we feel obligated to use it, especially mm-hmm. in Ohio, correct? Uh, strategically, 
Um, Strategic corn placement. <laughs> well, and that's what that has meant to me, I think, has evolved greatly from year to year. Mm-hmm. Like, there was a time where I was like, that's how you get, that's how you kill deer. That's how you get pictures and, you know. And a lot of people are, are there, you know, that's you, you dump it and, yep. and, and man, they do show up on it, right? Yep. Right, right like that. But they're, they're super hard to hunt, right? Yes. And they're, uh, they also, you know, you start to realize they, they manipulate the deer movement a lot. Oh, absolutely. A lot. And so I start feeling like the more work that we put onto the farm, the more that I've improved the habitat, the less I want to have something like a corn pile disturbing. Completely throw it all off. All of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, because they'll walk right through your food plot. They'll walk right through your, you know, whatever you've done. Yep. It just almost nullifies it, and it's almost kind of a shame. Yeah. You know? Um, regardless, I've got an order for 7,500 pounds uh, that I'm picking up Friday. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. and so keep in mind, it's, it's not just me hunting. I've got literally the guys that hunt our farm. Is, it's, it's me, my dad, my uncle, Brian, Willie, mm-hmm. and Corey. Yeah. Plus, you know, guests. From Pastor Don. Time to time. <laughs> Pastor Don, exactly. Yeah. So there's, you know, there's a pile of guys and like h- half of my season revolves around trying to get everybody on good deer, mm-hmm. right? And it's, some years are harder than, uh, frank, frankly, you know, if two if two of us kill bucks, yeah, you know, that's it's a pretty good, it's year. good year. Um, So I'm, we got this corn we're going to pick up and I'm, so r- right now I'm, not that I'm conflicted about it, but I'm considering, I'm pondering, like, man, how, how or where, mm-hmm. to if put at it all, out. am I, am I going to use this? Yeah. And there's, it's funny because I find myself there's most of the places I'm like I don't I don't want to like I I like I said I, I've got a lot of good movement patterns right now mm-hmm. I, fe- I feel yeah, like I'm on feel that. like I'm on these deer. Um, there's at least one spot uh, down where that deer uh, on the on the. Yeah, I, I know where you're at. I know where you're at. Uh, Gins with an L. Yep. Yes. That that is a spot that I went into. I've never hunted. I've never hunted over there. Mm-hmm. Um, that's where the cereal shitter was at. Yes. Uh, we, Dale and I drove in there last week and just drove around, went, went to different areas that I want. Those bucks that were on the mineral side in the summer have main most, for the most part are gone. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, well, let's just go in there. Let's, you know, yep. not afraid to go in and, yep. uh, see if there's sign and, and, and try to get a read on things. And just, you know, not much. nothing really stood out to me. Yeah. I just kind of, we, we cruised all the edges, like, you know drove in there i mean i wasn't bashful mm-hmm. about it and i just didn't didn't find anything that really was turning me on you know uh so that's one spot that in hopes of finding that deer Drop back it. the only hope that i've got is last year i did get a picture of that that big one uh mm-hmm. september 20th like, yeah like right in there yep so even though i haven't got him there recently there's hope that he may swing back through and, and find that so that's one spot that and i have there's a stand over that or it's the old leaser stand i'm mm-hmm. just a lot of go. can't take credit for yeah. it you know so but it's like, it's one of those spots where it's a baitable spot. Mm-hmm. There's nothing going on. I can't say that I'm necessarily going to hunt it. I have, I've got that other deer that I'm kind of honing in on. So I think much like the camera side where I'm at this year on <coughs> bait in Ohio or Kentucky is I'm using it survey purposes. Um, just, just to understand like, is there something I even want to hunt there? Cause mm-hmm. I just don't, Yeah, you know, we're not hunting 90 days a year as much as we want to. Um, so I just don't want to waste time in an area that there's not even a deer, like there's bucks. There's just not one that I'm going to hunt. Like I'd rather put, you know, my kids there or my dad there or whatever. So, um, I've used it to where I've been able to, like, I've, I've got one good buck behind my cabin in Kentucky. Uh, he showed up on a corn pile, but he's in a food plot. He's been coming in since. Yeah, it's a food plot, so he's been in there. Not super consistent. Dude, they're they're crushing the food plots. Right? My brassicas, I've got Dry. I've got them two mature bucks in Nebraska plots every night. A lot of moisture in those. The ones behind my house here in PA, like I, I had that mature buck show up two or three nights ago in PA. Um, I mean, dude, that plot looks so good. It still looks good, but I mean, they are mowing it. If I didn't have winter wheat in it, which I do, uh, it would look barren. Like they're hitting Nebraska's that hard. It's not even October. A lot of mine are too. That East Twin is all but. I mean, it's it looked awesome. It looked amazing. They just mowed it. It's yeah. It's Wendland and it's on it, dry. That's what I mean. There's just that's the water content. That's what they're looking dude, for. It is dry. Um, and my my chance next Tuesday that I told you gone going fast gone. going going gone. Yeah. So I mean, we got <clears throat> you know the food plot thing is tough. And, and on the flip side, 
You know, I know there's really good acorns in uh, in an Ohio. In Pennsylvania, I've found some chestnut oaks. In Kentucky, I barely have found anything again, which... I still got a 40% chance. Um, my food plots look really good on the new Kentucky farm. I haven't ba- I haven't put any corn out there at all. Mm-hmm. I haven't baited anything out there. Mm-hmm. I haven't um, either. Yeah, I've, I haven't put anything down yet. So, and I've, I've got good bucks on it. Um, you know, some really good shooters probably, but I'd like to see some of those get another year or I'll wait till later in the season to figure out what else shows up, but... Um, yeah, I mean, I think from a survey standpoint, I just want to know, you know, what's in the area. And once I know that they're there, then it's like, all right, I can haunt them. Sure. Super valuable. Um, truthfully, I feel like I'm getting a pretty good survey. I mean, I'm, I'm running enough cameras that like over time I've been running them since June, yep. you know, so I'm, I'm getting a pretty good sense. I've been hunting this farm for seven, eight years now. Yeah. You know, you know I, how to kill them. It's, it's just funny. It's like, there. I feel like I'm getting better at it, but the reality is I've just, I'm figuring the property out. I know where to get pictures of deer and stuff. And so, and that's fun. Um, my main reason for, uh, for, for the corn is defense defense. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm torn on that too. Cause I don't know if it will actually accomplish that. But the theory is like, you know, when everybody else gets their corn piles out opening day, gun season, Mm-hmm. primarily yep. open the day of youth use. gun season. Yeah. It's like, how do I use that to, uh, to preserve, you know, yeah. to save as many deer as possible, you know, especially the mature bucks, you know, the ones I'm trying to get to the next age class. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause if you don't have them, they're moving off your property for, for real though. Like if, if anybody's got success with that, like it feels like they're honestly mm-hmm. saving deer, like getting, you know, uh, I'd love to hear it because, yeah. cause I, I, we've done it and it just seems like, well, and not to sound like a bitch fest, but, <clears throat> you know, because obviously you have mature bucks right now, but most of your really good bucks in his, in the last few years are dead. They, they've gotten killed over a corn pal in youth or gun season. I mean, it's like almost everyone, almost everyone. And yeah. that's, you know, it, it is what it is. It's just like, how do you offset that? It's an amazing statistic. It's like, it almost doesn't seem possible, but it's like, how do they kill it? They killed mm-hmm. everyone. Which is every year. It's also for five years in a row. <laughs> it's also interesting though, because like this year you've got a handful of mature bucks still. Yeah. Um, I think some of those are newbies. Some of them have left to the point of filling the void. Mm-hmm. They haven't been around for a year or two, and all of a sudden they show back up as a mature buck for sure because somebody yeah. else got killed. And that's you know that's a, a blessing, I guess. You know, it's yeah. yeah. At least there's mature bucks there. It's not like we talked. I talked to Nick the other day, and he's like, man, he's like, I can't get a deer past three years old where I'm at in Wisconsin, mm-hmm. and it's like that would be frustrating. No matter what you do, you're not getting that deer past three years old. Well, we struggle with that too. Like, frankly, the mature deer that do show up a lot of times seem like we've never seen them before. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I so, thought that last name started with an S. <laughs> no. No. That have been funny. Um, so, yeah. No, it is. Anyways, uh, we're going to talk Kentucky elk story today. But, but first... But first, you want to see this rack I got sitting here? It came from North Dakota, so yes, right. we didn't have this for the last thing. Mm. Here you go. Oh my goodness, dude! Yeah, he should have been on whatever the pod, but I I didn't have him yet. <laughs> this is the first ever time Jeremy is seeing it in person. Of close, the first time he's getting <laughs> his hands on him. Oh, dude. Yeah, he's seen him. That's so gnarly, man. So like literally just out of it. It's amazing how sharp like those antlers are. Yep. That's, I mean, that is the the most typical points I've ever seen personally, like on a whitetail. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen any more typical points. Well, than the that. one I killed two years ago did. Seven by seven, right? Uh, six by six with double split brows. Yeah. Um. So that one's technically. Got I don't f- think I've ever seen a seven, like it's a, a yeah, seven typical. Yeah, yeah. He's. In terms of like on the beam, mm-hmm. I would agree. Yeah, he's a mainframe seven by six with a kicker off of his two. These are kind of interesting too. Little yeah, not L- just little like inside out. flyers. Fresh, fresh rubbing on the willows and stuff. Damn, dude, that's giant. In case anybody's wanting to look, giant. That's a cool looking deer. Yeah, those beams are are misleading because it has so many points. Doesn't it? Like to look at it, doesn't it look like them beams are like 23, 24 inches at least? Yeah, and twenty twos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just he's just got a you more know, of a compact frame. It you know? almost is because like he he goes out quickly. Like he doesn't come up and then out. He just like goes out really quickly. Mm. So it's almost like the height that would come through. Sure. Um. Man, that's wild. Though. That is a freaking cool looking deer. Isn't that cool? 
pretty nice, man. Yeah. <laughs> so that left left side is where I tore off that little bit of velvet. You can see. Yeah. It, it's funny. I don't think most people realize like antlers are white. Like oh, pure, yeah. pure, pure white, white, like bone. bone. The coloration comes from I, maybe in rubbing. part their diet, but mainly like all this up front here is, mm -hmm. is mud yep. and, and whatever rubbing. they're rubbing in and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's where that coloration comes from. That's why this part is completely white. You know, it's almost untouched. I pulled a little bit of velvet off it right here. And uh, uh, I don't know, like, because I've not really thought about it before. He reminds me of a deer, and I can't remember which one, but... Um, it's either white whale or the one I killed two years ago. Is white the, whale. The two it looks like. Yeah, it's white whale. Uh, Go grab white whale. In shed Kansas. Uh, in so Kansas. The really white ones. In there, there. That's what I was going to say. In Kansas, a lot of the bucks we see are very, very white antlered yeah. on the hoof. Yeah. Um, I wonder if it's just because they're not rubbing a lot or... It's probably what they're rubbing on. Yeah. Not as dirty. like the, These, like a, these look, guys live in mud bottoms. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Slammer though, isn't he? Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, he does look like that deer. Just because of the, mm -hmm. how it kind of forms down mm -hmm. there. <laughs> yeah. Looks a lot like him, dude. Looks a lot like him. Yeah, because this was two years before I killed him. Yeah, two years before I killed Whitewell. Yeah. Yeah, it looks a lot like him. How cool is that? So I put a tape on him yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, came out to 158 and 7 eighths. Crazy. Yeah, we. I mean, transparently, we all thought he was going to be scored more than that, just because when you hear about that many tines. Um, I was thinking mid sixties, but I also was thinking a slightly bigger spread, slightly longer beams. Yep, and maybe better tines. Those beams would have done it, you know. I mean, because like I think you said eight and a half or something was the best time. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so yeah, I mean, wild though. I'm happy with him. Yeah, that's a freaking cool <laughs> deer, dude. I'm gonna leave him on the table. There. Yeah, let's leave him on the table. Him on the table, pretty crazy. So if I killed that thing, did you believe that? Yep, it's freaking. We don't just talk about deer hunting. We do actually. It's September, and there's already a big, big buck dead. Yeah, buddy. Um, September six, I think. Shot. So if you're listening to this and you haven't already, go back to last Thursday's podcast bonus episode and listen to the North Dakota hunt. Um, pretty cool to to hear it all, and um, I, I think it's just amazing that like that was the buck you you saw first morning. And then essentially it was a chess game until literally the last 20 minutes. You want to know something crazy? I paid $600 to get that thing shipped back here. Oh my God. You might as well have got it mounted out there. Can you believe that? Seriously. I, had, I was not expecting no that. No offense to Trav, but you might as well have got it mounted out there. I was not expecting that. The, the rack was $100 for standard shipping. Yep. Still seems expensive. The, the, okay. hide, the hide was $500. And it's because it was overnight. So it was overnight, and it was, it, was packed, it was packed with dry ice. It couldn't have been that heavy. I mean, maybe. 40 pounds, probably? No. A hide? With all the dry ice and stuff? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it was the overnight option. That all did the it. extra rocks Lucas put in there? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and so, and then Lucas was like, um, he's, I was like, what's what's the two-day option look yeah. like? I was like, that's got to be way cheaper. And he's like, it's still like 375, and it, it's more likely to get there after three or four days Ugh. with that option. And I was like, you can't, that that's no good. So I didn't really have an option at that Woo. point. Yeah, that's crazy, man. I'm not proud of it necessarily. I didn't. I didn't love writing that, you know, check. But Shh, don't listen to him. It's part of it. Don't listen <laughs> to him. He doesn't mean it. Yeah, that's worth <laughs> it. Why? Why uh, is it so expensive? Just I don't because know. They like know. That it's called the United States <laughs> Postal Service, Nick. Let's let's try to analyze Joe that. Joe Biden. That's why. Yeah, I guess mm -hmm. you're right. Mm -hmm. Those are both good points. Yeah. <laughs> what you said analyze. the other day, we're we're buying hunters uh, crack. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, what we're doing. yeah. When I when I got my uh, my I finally finished my taxes and I owe the government a bunch of money and I was like, all I feel like is I'm buying Hunter Biden's crack at this point. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty Daddy, much. Daddy needs that. a new rock. Yeah, pretty much. So, anyways, uh, want to talk Kentucky elk? Yeah, man. I want to hear about it. Okay. The Hunter Podcast is brought to you by Muddy. Man, Jared, we probably have been using Muddy products for at least 10 years now. It's a long time, dude. It's been a long time. And I can remember when it was simply just safety harnesses and camera arms of all things. And, you know, that's evolved to where you and I both have a bunch of Muddy box blinds as well. I would say a bunch. But, yeah, they, they've come a long way. And certainly the box blinds are, are huge. Shot that buck over your shoulder out of a Muddy box blind a couple years ago. The harness and, and all of the other safety accessories really are, are a major component of, of what Muddy offers for me. 
Um, you know, we've had some injuries in the past, you know, some, some tree stand accidents. This, this is all back before we were using, uh, you know, frankly, harnesses, mm -hmm. uh, the lineman's belt while we're hanging stuff, and the safe lines. I have those in every single one of, uh, you know, our fixed tree stands now. And uh, so we really have made safety a priority. Uh, that, that's a big deal for us. And, uh, you know, Muddy has everything we need for that. Yeah, and I think uh, the cool thing about Muddy is anyone listening to the Hunter podcast can save 20% using the code HUNTER20, that's H-U-N-T-R-2-0. Uh, anything that you can see on the Muddy Outdoors store online, use that code, save yourself 20% for this hunting season. Go Muddy. Uh, hopefully my memory is not too fuzzy because this is a couple weeks after uh, the elk hunt has happened. And uh, it's probably for the best, though. I've I've cooled off a little bit yeah. since then, you know. I was editing uh, Jared's episode, and I, I remember <coughs> you saying there were some highs, some lows, and some really, really, really lows. lows. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, in my older age now, I've uh, I've calmed down nice. uh, over that. But, no, so we um, I, I kind of start from the beginning. So people who are not familiar, um, the largest elk herd east of the Mississippi is in Kentucky. Um, so, you know, I, I've seen estimates somewhere around 15,000 elk. Really? It's bigger than in PA. Yep. yep. Oh, wow. Bigger than PA, bigger than Missouri, bigger than Virginia. So yeah, it's the largest elk herd. Um, they've been hunting it since 2002 or three. I mean, it's, it's been hunted for a while, but it really wasn't until I think like 2008 or nine, um, that they started ramping up tag allocations. And I'll, I'll get into this later because we did some research. But, you know, when when we heard about this, so Emily's uncle, my wife's uncle, is the one who drew drew the tag. And uh, it was a either sex archery tag, um, which you use compound or crossbow for it. And then you get assigned a unit, basically. But you can also put in for what is called a regulated area. And it's essentially private land that's open to elk hunting, but there's a limited amount of tags for it. Um, so... You know, when he got drawn, I kind of started to do all my research, contacted some people that we knew in the area, and uh, I this think is he, this is Emily's uncle. Yep, I think he had five options of what he could put in for, like, hey, where do you want to hunt, right? And so I, a lot of people will put in for a unit because they know, hey, unit seven, for instance, is the best success. I went in and put in for all regulated areas, thinking if there's if there's a decent piece of property that has elk on it and there's only one or two of us on that property, odds are we're going to get on those elk. That was my theory, at least. So we put in for all regulated areas. Sounds and, like it was the right theory. Yeah, and he drew one. He drew one, um, coincidentally, about an hour and a half south of my cabin in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, basically the area was 30, 3,500 acres or so. Uh, and there was only two of us, him and one other person that drew a tag. So, I mean, that's a lot of room for two people to go. What we quickly found out, and it's not just in this unit, it's in a bunch, is like the elk hunting isn't what it used to be. Um, and so I did some research. Back in like 2009, they issued a thousand tags, a thousand elk tags were issued. Uh, about 750 of those were cow tags and 250 of those were bull tags. You know, you know how many bulls they were harvesting? About 235 of that 250. Wow. So you're talking like super, super high success rates. Were they baiting them? I know Kentucky's a bait state. No, you can't bait elk. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can't bait elk. Uh, Can you bait whitetails on properties where deer or elk live? I don't see why you couldn't. Uh. So, you know, the, the, the options you have to hunt are... These regulated areas, which are tough to get into, uh, public land, so just open public land access. So you got an elk on your Hoyt shirt there. Got, got an elk on my Hoyt shirt. Limited edition Big shirt. elk hunter now, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, apparently. <laughs> kind of a big deal. <laughs> or private land. I was like that one time Jeremy went musky fishing. He's like, pretty big musky fishing. Pretty big musky fish right now. <laughs> pretty big, pretty big deal. You been musky fishing? Uh, and uh, so I think that um, out of the gate, you know, private land would be the way to go. Like if you could find private land with elk on it, um, that's unpressured. Like it seems like that's where you're, you would hunt. So you have one piece of 3,500 acre 
That's what we end up drawing. Okay. But there, I mean, there's a bunch of them. There's a bunch that are out there. It's mm -hmm. just, you have to put in this lottery to get drawn for those. After you draw a tag, then you're in another lottery to figure out where you hunt. Oh, wow. What if you don't draw that? You, they put you in another unit? Put you in another unit. Okay. Yep. So if you, if of your five preferences of where you want to hunt, if you don't get drawn in any of those five, then they assign you a random unit. And just say, is hey, it in order like one, two, three, four, five, or here's five places I'd like to hunt? Here's five places with first priority first. Did you get drawn on your first priority? No, we got drawn on the fifth. Okay. <laughs> so last, last chance. Okay. Um, but I mean, still regulated area. Yep. So the regulated area is um, usually because that was one of the areas near where elk were reintroduced originally and had populations that were pretty, pretty stout. Um, when I started to talk to some of the locals where we were at, it was anything but that. I mean, to be honest, every local I talked to was pretty much like, yeah, uh, sorry, you're not going to, there are none. You're not going to see any. And it's like, well, where are they? Where, where do they go? And they're like, well, they're trapping them out. You know, I, I swear to God that the things I've heard, and I don't know what some of these I know are not true, but the things I heard, and I don't mean to make anybody angry, listen to this is, They've trapped them out of that area and they've moved them to other areas of the state. Very possible. Um, who's, who's they? The department. Okay. Would trap elk out of this area because there's a bunch of them and move them to a new area. Of trap? The state. How do you trap an elk? Darts, rocket nets. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the best one I heard was from a local in a grocery parking lot of which we, we as in Kentucky, traded elk for bears with Tennessee. So we tra we trapped elk. We took them to Tennessee. Tennessee gave us black bears in exchange. <laughs> Probably a stretch. How would anybody want black bears? I I don't know. Um, but that was that was the best one. Regardless, clearly everybody believes. Are there black bears there? Yeah, there are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are there black bears around your cabin? Yep. Really? Yeah, I've got a couple on camera right now. Mm. Yeah, there's a it's a weird season for them, but um, there is a hunting season for them. Not to side I hate black bears, but I hit a black bear with my car once. What? what? And, and you I, live to tell about it? I, I, I totaled my car. Um, this was like five, four or five years ago. I was like 20 years old, and uh, I was wow. just like driving. It wasn't that late. It was like 9, 10 p.m. It was like October, and uh you know, black bears are, you know, rather, black, rather. Yeah. They're black. They're and, dark. You yeah, know, it's, uh, it. it's, it's laid out and I just see this massive thing just in, you know, right in the front of the road, tried to slam on my brakes and like totaled my car, bear lived fine. Like just walked off into the woods. Whoa. Yeah. It was, it was kind of an animal. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, just thought I'd share that. It's an interesting <laughs> story, Nick. Don't hit a black bear. Yeah. Don't. Moral of the story. Don't <laughs> hit a black bear. Um, so yeah, there are bears there. And um, so I guess the week before the season started, so this would have been um, opening week in a bow season. So it was like September 2nd or 3rd. <clears throat> we went out to the, there was two different tracks. We went out to the main track um, to hunt and we walked six or seven miles probably easily, drove around some too. We didn't even see a freaking elk track. Not only did we not see an elk, we didn't see a freaking track of an elk. Saw some really nice whitetails. Um, but I mean, no elk sign whatsoever, which was pretty disheartening because it's like, uh, you know, yeah, you're gone. what are we going to do? Hunt a week out here. And like, we haven't even seen a track yet. Mm -hmm. Um, so talked to some more locals, kind of got the same story, but ended up finding out on the map that they gave us, it was inaccurate, uh, which was kind of a blessing in disguise. But, um, there was another track that belonged to the same regulated area that we were hunting that was labeled wrong on the map. So I talked to some of the local game wardens in the area um, and talked to a couple other locals in the area and kind of got the hint that like, don't where you were, don't, there hasn't been elk there in three years. Like there were, there were three bulls at one point, one got poached, one got hit by a car, the other one's gone. Uh, you need to focus on this, this other track. Cool. Okay. You like, that sounds great. There's a key. It's a lock gate. So you have to go get the key from this office. Um, and so, you know, this is days before the hunt starts. So we're just like, okay, like that's what we're going to do. Um, so we got there Friday night. We went over the property, um, got up into this top. And keep in mind, I've never been elk hunting like at, do, in my life. Do these elk down here, are they covering? Like, are they still like a nomadic? There's still some transient. Yes. Yes. They are moving. 
I don't know how much though, but they are moving for sure. Cause a lot of those areas that I was researching, they would say transient elk, meaning they're just moving through, mm. you know, they're not staying on that. And, and the other thing is, and I didn't know again, cause I'm, I'm a novice elk hunter. literally on Friday night, I'm sitting there with YouTube videos, learning how to elk call. And it sounds like trumpets going off. That's the best way to do it. Yeah. I had no idea what I was doing. Mm. Um, so Friday evening before it got dark, we go out there <clears throat> and uh, we go up on this top and there's a guy on a tractor up like in this property. What the I hell? love the tractors in Kentucky. Like what the hell? A super guy. And apparently his, they lease part of the property for deer hunting. And so he was up there like mowing trails and stuff. And so we were like, hey, you know, we're elk hunting tomorrow. Not exclusive lease? lease? Uh, no, that was exclusive to deer hunting only. So you couldn't go in the section where the guy was leasing? No, I could. I could. Because I, it was he part was of the He was just leasing elk. the deer hunting rights. Correct. Okay. Yep. Yep. Not the elk stuff. Interesting. And uh, super guy. And basically kind of the same story. He's like, man, he's like, I'll be honest. I've got, you know, I saw a spike last year. He's like, I haven't seen anything. I haven't heard anything. He's like 10 years ago. He's like, we would be taking corn into our deer hunting spot. And he said, there'd be 20 el elk running down this road behind us, like waiting for us to drop it. Hmm. And it's like, what the hell? And, you know, you try to hear the story and it's hard to keep in mind, like the, where these elk are, where we're hunting is old reclaimed strip mine. Um, so it was old coal company, company ground. It was all stripped out. So now it's just autumn olives and thick shit. Right. And so we talked to him for a while and we go down in and we don't, I have no idea where we're going. I marked a couple places on Onyx and I was just like, yeah, these, these look like good spots to go check out. And we're like walking down in this old logging road about 200 yards. And I turned to him and I said, you're going to think I'm fucking crazy. I smell elk. And he's like, what are you talking about? I was like, I smell an elk. And it, I've never elk hunted before. I don't, I, I don't know why. Like I just assumed like, what else is it going to be? And we walk like 20 more yards and there's this giant bed like right off the side of the road that's like fresh, like smells fresh. And I'm like, it's freaking elk here. Like, and again, we've never been on this property. We don't know anything. Walk a little further, find, find elk tracks. And we're like, holy shit, we're in the game. Like, this is, this is wild. Like, we're in the game. And that night, we end up walking down to one of these spots that I had marked and uh, basically walk up on a cow that was bedded. She stands up, looks at us, and kind of just trots off. And it's like, okay. Like, and your guy's bow hunting. Yeah, so this is Friday. He's got a vertical bow, and yep. he's an older gentleman. Yep, 63. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And my plan was uh, like, I'm in shape, so I'm, I'm going, and yeah. this is not easy territory. This is straight up, straight down, yeah. nasty strip, stuff. old strip. Yeah. Um, he's got his work cut out for him for the week mm -hmm. for sure. Um, and it, you know, ultimately I don't have a tag, so it's, it's wherever he wants to go is where we end up going. But like, I'm leading the way to try to find these out. Yeah. If he was doing a train, did he train for no. it? <laughs> none. Mm -mm. Oh, come on. None. No, none. Um, yeah. So, I mean, you know, I don't know. My expectations were low going in because everybody that we've talked to has basically said like they're, they're not there anymore or it's really hard. And if you look at the success rates where we were in the area, the bow success rates were like 25%, 28%. Like it was pretty low compared to even the other units. Um, but at one point in time, this area had the most elk, like it was the most populated area for elk. Mm -hmm. So we leave and, um, uh, you know, I'm kind of stoked about the fact that we like found elk. It was way better than the last weekend. So open the morning, we get up, we get over there. When we get there, there's two other vehicles there. And so the one thing it, just kind of back up and educate people. The one thing that is very popular down there is hiring a guide or an outfitter. Um, because the terrain is so rugged and these elk are difficult to locate. And especially because of a lot of the elk being on private land, these outfitters, uh, oftentimes are leasing private land and then taking people who drew tags in that unit onto the public land or onto the private land to hunt. Um, in this case, the other hunter who drew in the regulated area with, with her uncle, um, hired an outfitter or a guide to guide him on the regulated area. We can get into the beef of like, I'm not a big fan of that. Um, it, in terms of like, 
if it's private land and stuff like that, I think you can do what you want. And this is kind of borderline. Like it is private land, but it's not because it's elk regulated public open area. So we know, I know at this point, seeing the two vehicles that, um, and I could just, you know, it's funny. I could just tell from the guide's vehicle that it was a guide, you know, and, uh, and you know, it just is what it is. So I, I kind of said, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm going to take the high road here. Like these guys are out ahead of us. Like, I don't want to screw them up. So we just, if they're here, we're going there. If they're there, we're going here. Like, we're just going to try to stay out of each other's hair until we get to sync up. And at that point, hopefully we can come up with a plan. So we drive up the hill, um, to where we park before we have to walk in and, and preface that by, you can't use uh, side by side or ATV to hunt. You can use it to access but then everything else has to be walking and you can only use it again if you need to retrieve an animal basically. So we would park at like these main entrances and then we would walk. It's kind of a weird and, distinction. Like you can use it to access, but not to hunt, not to like hunt, not to like get down in and hunt in these areas and stuff. Yeah. So like a lot of it's old log landings and, and roads and stuff from the strip mining, you can't be driving all through there. Like, you know, hunting from the vehicle, basically. Sure. You have to park up and walk into there. And, and then you can, if you shoot one, then you go back and get your vehicle and bring it down to get it out. Yeah. So he's, he's parked up on the top. We go by him to park on the other side. And then we drop down the hill. Basically the plan was to go into where we'd saw the cow the night before. And so we walked down in there that morning. I'm playing the wind. It's kind of a little squirrely down in those bottoms. And we get close to where that cow was bedded. Um, and I smell elk again, like strong, really strong. And it's like, how would, how would you describe the smell of an elk? Like a horse or a cow, like a mix between a horse and a cow. Like, like a smells livestock. like livestock. Mm. Yeah. And, and I didn't realize it at the time and, and, in retro thinking about it, um, like it probably was like either like the musk of a rutting bull or a cow and estrus mm -hmm. because like I, I thought this is early September. I thought we would be like a little later to peak rut down there because like, you know, think about the Western U S or Pennsylvania, like it's that first week or two of September, you know, but I just figured being South, like a whitetail, you know, they're going to kind of rut a little bit later. Apparently not like we were in it. Mm. So we end up checking up about a hundred yards from where I want to be because I'm like, man, the wind's swirling. All I'm doing is I'm still hunting by wind at this point. Like that's, there's, I don't know what else I'm doing. I'm, Cause I'm not a down Connor. Just wandering until you hear something or see something. So we carve ourselves into these pine trees. That's pretty much how, how you elk hunt. Yep. Carve ourselves into these pine trees. We're waiting, we're waiting. And like. What, so what prompted you to set up? The fact that where I wanted to go, I couldn't get to because of the wind without blowing it down in. And the fact that I smelled elk, like as soon as I hit the trail. Yeah. So I kind of backed up and dumped in thinking they might be there to keep the wind in our favor. Three on, on like a logging road or a, um, it's like an old, an old logging road, like overgrown logging road. Like it was a single track trail basically okay. going through the autumn olives. Okay. Uh, and these autumn olives are 10 plus feet tall. Like, I mean, it's thick as balls in there. And it's probably 20 minutes, I'd say after we were in there and all of a sudden freaking elk bugles. And it's like, what the hell? <laughs> like, there's an elk bugle. Cow call, bugle, cow call. And then, like, quickly it was like, oh, like, that's the outfitter. Like, he's calling. Like, his, his vehicle's parked there. This is happening over here. Like, it's him calling. So I don't, I don't call at all, right? Because what I don't know is, like, we, we haven't met these guys. We haven't talked to them. I don't want them to think I'm an elk calling back and then them end up on top of us. Mm -hmm. Um. So I don't call it all. And then I can like hear it. Like it's mostly bugles, but a couple cow calls and they're walking up the road that we just walked in on. So they're heading up towards where we parked and we basically had come in and dropped down the hill. And I, you know, John was like, well, what do you think? I was like, well, I said it's an outfitter. I was like, I don't want to call. And then them come in here. I want to get down in this bottom. You're pretty sure. Pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. Cause just like, did you think like, sounds pretty good or yeah, it sounded too good. Like, I uh, like, uh, somebody's calling too good. Cause it ended up being a, a bolt. Like you thought so, right? Yeah. Well, I heard his four wheeler start up right after that. Yeah. And I was like, ah, shit. And he's like, what? I was like, how far do you think the, 
the elk were from you? 80 yards. No way. Yep. On the on the dirt road, the main dirt road access coming oh, in. Oh, wow. And it was a bull with a cow or a couple cows working from the bottom back up around us. So at that point, I finally was like, shit, I got a call. And um, I, nothing. Like at that point, they had worked down past us. Okay. I did hear them call one more time up by our vehicle. So I don't know how they worked up that ditch. I mean, this terrain is gnarly. When you started too. calling, just cow calling? Cow calling. Yeah. yeah. I, I The only time I bugled is when I knew that the outfitter wasn't in position to pounce on me. Nick, do you know what a cow elk sounds like? Uh, Maybe. Oh, I was going to have Nick give you a, a go. Your uh, best guess of what, uh, what it sounds like. Uh, I was thinking some like Chewbacca sound. <laughs> yeah, not quite. Yeah. Not quite. Like a meow, 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 okay. Meow. Meow. Gotcha. Yeah. Meow. Kind of weird for yeah. as big of an animal as they are. Yeah, really like, weird sounding. Meow. Meow. Yeah. Meow. Yeah. Weird sounding. And so, uh, like, the way that it's playing playing out now is like holy shit we've got like there's bulls there's elk bugling like the the game has changed I still don't know how to play it with this outfitter though because like he's he's moving in in our wheelhouse basically so we end up working down into this bottom didn't see anything at that point kind of the smell had went away so it's not, it, it felt like those animals were there and then they had moved off when the wind switched because I didn't move until the wind switched too um, and we probably hunted till I don't know eleven eleven thirty. And as I was walking out, I heard another bull and cow. They had basically circled down around us, and now they were going up another big ditch. And I never could see them. Uh, and I'm 99% sure it wasn't the outfitter. And I'll, I'll say, tell you why here in a second. But like, I just couldn't ever see them. But I knew where they were going. And it made sense with the wind in the shade, because it was hot, where they would probably you know, hold up. So this kind of turned into a central theme of your hunt of like the, the not knowing, you know, how, you know, with this outfitter, what's, what's yeah. elk, what's outfitter, where, how are you guys doing this? And I don't know if that's just me. It, maybe it's me being naive and inexperienced. Like, I don't know how the hell I would tell the difference. And it, I haven't elk hunted it's enough. It's hard to tell. Yeah. I mean, when a bugle sounds off, it's like, well, it's funny because like sometimes the, you know, sometimes you'll hear, I've done it. But, uh, with turkey hunting, I think yep. more that, but you hear, you hear, uh, you know, a bugle or a turkey gobble back at you and you're like, uh, it sounds terrible. It's not, it just sounds terrible. And then you find out like that, it, it was, was, that's what they really sound like. Yeah. And, and so again, I don't have a, I have a, I kind of don't have a dog in the fight. I, I don't have a tag. I'm just the assistant basically by record. Um, so I'm trying to take a high road. So we, we leave at noon when we're leaving, we run into the guide and the outfitter, um, can I say classic what I thought it was going to be? Mm -hmm. Not not necessarily to the guy. Like, good dude. I talked to him for a while. Thought he was a good dude. Uh, but, like, straight up, like, what I dislike about archery season in terms of the hunter. Um, How so? Oh, just, like, you know, walked out of a retail store with a $3,000 crossbow uh, with, a like, a 4 by 12 scope on it. Um, mm hmm like everything I despise in archery season. Mm. Uh, you know, and some of it was the attitude that I got. The other one was, this was like the second $3,000 crossbow. You talk, do you talk to the hunter at all? A little bit, yeah. not much. Second $3,000 crossbow in two weeks, he blew up. Was he tatted up? He no, was, but he had more piercings? more jewelry in his face than a 2000 emo kid is what I told you. A lot of piercings. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, straight rings, like... Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Lots of, it, it made sense at some point, but you think that would get caught on some like model four or something. <laughs> maybe that's why well, he was, maybe that was why he was blowing up his crossbows. I don't maybe, know. Maybe. Um, so anyways, not to pick on crossbows, but that's, that's just how it was. So you didn't like the guy out of the gate. Uh, you just, I just said, just look at this not, guy. I said, I don't like this guy. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I was not a big fan of the, I, I just, I think I told John, I was like classic, but mm. just, yeah, that's I, just I, how I, I knew it was going to be. Yeah. Um, and so I, I talked to the guide and we, he and I had a long conversation there at the truck and basically it was me saying, Hey, listen, there's only two of us on this place. We know there's elk in here. I said, I don't know when you're calling. You don't know when I'm calling. I said, so I'll tell you when I was calling, you tell me if it was elk or you. And I said, let's just be open about this. We, we can hunt this pretty effectively this week. Just trying to, so I told him when he's like, yeah, that wasn't me. That was elk walking behind you. Okay. Great. Um, I said, how about 
uh, just a little bit ago, I heard elk going up in that bowl. He's like, no, that was probably us up there. I was like, okay, that makes a hundred percent makes sense. And, um, so that was it. It was just kind of like, hey, if you're going to keep parking there, we're going to park over <laughs> here. Thought I, I thought for sure I smelled elk over in this one area. He's like, no, I took a dump over no, there. No, no, no. That wasn't. That wasn't. <laughs> that was me. No, that was me. That was me. I was, I was just peeing my morning coffee. Uh, um, and I said, if you're going to park over there, we'll stay over here. And, and you I guys said, are on a 3,500 acre tract. Yep. This this piece is only about 1,000. Okay. It's only about 1,000 acres. Okay. But it's thick, dude. There's no openings. Like, it is all hard. Thick. To, yeah, hard to believe. I mean, 1,000 is quite a bit it's smaller. It's a giant, than, like at one point I climbed up on this like lookout rock and it's just giant autumn olive fields that are thick with like kudzu all over them. I mean, it's just gnarly stuff hmm. and it's just up and down and, and, you know, carved out areas where they strip mine. Probably some good bucks in there. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Um, I saw a couple. So we leave, we get lunch, we come back and I said, Hey, I know. I said, he's saying that's where he was. I said, but I don't have any better options than to go down into this bottom and check it out because that's that's where I felt like the elk were going to be. It seemed like they always were centralizing down in this bottom. This after like a morning of scouting, uh, and I found some rub. Uh, I found some tracks. I didn't find any rubs. I found a bunch of beds. So we walk clear down in the bottom. It's almost a mile um, down into this far bottom from where we park, and we're like three, 400 feet below the ridge line. So the ridge line's way up above us. Then it hillsides down. It's autumn olives and kudzu. It's just thick, nasty shit. Then there's this road we came in on and we sat down on this bottom. We tuck ourselves back in there and uh, I'm ranging, I'm ranging the, the uh, field or the hillside out in front of us. And I said, okay, you know, you basically, we can shoot to 40 yards pretty easily. And uh, it's probably, it's hot, man. It's 80s, mid, mid to high 80s. And, you know, we're tucked into this autumn olive bush in the shade. We kind of trimmed it out. And it's probably 30 minutes, maybe 40 minutes after we're in there. And it's like, holy shit, here comes one. And it's, it sounded like an elephant coming through the woods. And it wasn't because he was like hauling ass. It's just that big of an animal and it's that thick. And like, I could hear his hooves hitting the ground. Hmm. Like it was just such a, a, like a weird feeling. Cause it's like, holy shit, like that's an elk. That's an elk coming. And then I'm listening and I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's like sticks off like antlers. Like it's a big, and I told you weird, like such a, you know, such a m mystical stealthy, th like I felt the same way in North Dakota when this sucker was yeah. coming through this mud. I was like, there's, I, we were laughing about it. Cause I was like, there's no way that's, it's a moose or something. I was like. No, it's yeah. a giant buck, and I heard him coming a mile away. I know. And, I mean, he's just – I can hear him just moving through. And I told John, I said, hey, there, there's one coming. Like, he's coming. And, mm -hmm. like, at that point, I, like, looked down the hill behind us, and I realized there's a little, like, dried, almost dried-up pond down there with water. It has some water in it. And, like I said, it's hot. He's coming down into drinking that pond. and But there's no shot behind us. Like, it's just so thick. Like, I can barely see anything there. And – it's probably like a minute or two after I heard him and I hear cow calling and I look and I see the outfitter walking the ridge line above me, cow calling. And I'm like, what the fuck? You know, like, you know, he knew where we were going to be. I told him where we were going to be. And so it's like, okay, he's trying to go after the elk that was bugling up the valley. Cause that's to my right. That's really the elk we were hunting. I thought that elk was going to come back down out of that valley right to where I heard him around lunchtime he's now working the top ridge to try to get ahead of that elk that he think is thinks is in that valley and so i like i can't call or anything right because i'm going to draw attention to us he doesn't see the elk that's <laughs> coming through down below us he's just walking that ridge out how far he's 300 feet straight up above me oh like on a rock straight straight up above me like right on you right on top of me yeah oh. And then he works out the ridge line. He starts going out the ridge line, and I hear him bugling out that way. And I'm like, okay, he's you know he's going that way. He's going that way. Um, and so I I hear this bull work down into the water hole and start drinking. He's that close. I can hear him drinking. Did like, uh, did that bull you think hear him cow calling and walking? No, no. no this bull ends up. He doesn't give a shit about anything. He's a satellite bull for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and there's no other bulls you know, bugling, there's no cows doing anything. I don't hear, I don't hear anything. So I, I cow call a couple times at this and I don't hear anything. I can kind of hear him moving down there. And then it's just like quiet. 
And I'm like, you know, he's down there. We've got an hour and a half till dark. I was like, he's right here somewhere, like right in his back pocket. And I can hear now the outfitters out pretty far. I heard him bugle again. And uh, it's probably about 10 minutes and I can hear leaves moving. And I said, hey, you know, he's still over here. He's still over here. And next thing I know, he just steps right up onto the road we just came down on and walks right up onto the hill that, that I'm watching here. And I was like, hey, he's right here, like 55 yards probably. Put the, I have my Canon binos. Put my cannon. Bi- oh you. yeah! Oh wow! Cannon binos up, and I'm like, oh, I said it's a bull. I said, Probably all you saw was him. Good. I said it's a good bull, and uh, you know, I think at that time, you know, John's never elk kind of. He's put in for this tag for almost 20 years. Wow. Um, every year for 20 years, and you know, John bow hunts for sure. Uh, he's killed some deer around it. It's just I don't know what would prepare you for like this type of encounter you're about to experience because it's not. It's not just an elk like encounter. It's like, this is a once in a lifetime tag. You, you don't get probably drawn for a Kentucky elk tag twice in a lifetime. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a, you know, we had just kind of hurt. We knew he was there. Right. So, I mean, like anybody, you know, the shakes start a I'm little sure bit. There's a pressure and, that comes with that. Yeah. It starts to work up. And, um, you know, I think when, when I saw him, <laughs> The broadhead going back yeah, and forth. Yeah, broadhead was going back and forth. And I'm right over his shoulder here. That's the telltale sign. So you I'm, start seeing that broadhead go. I'm trying to I'm trying to like whisper and calm. Like I had ranged everything. Like the wind was perfect. I mean, we were golden here. I said, listen, he ain't going anywhere. He's on that hill. He's eating kudzu, which threw me off. Like I couldn't believe they were eating this like the it's the vine of the south, basically. Mm. Um, I mean, he's just eating it like crazy, working this hillside. And the hard part to describe is like, I'm learning how elk behave and what they're about to do and explain to him in real time, in real time. (laughs) And it's, it's, it's really got my wires crossed. Right. But I'm, I do, we have been so methodical to this point and how we hunted, how we went through areas where we picked to sit, how the wind, what, like, I mean, we were very, very particular, like at this point, it's about as flawless as it gets. Mm. And, um, I'm watching this elk come through and I said, Hey, got an hour till dark. He's, he's going to work along here. And at that time, I realized that elk, it sounds stupid, elk aren't like whitetails in the fact like when a whitetail's coming along a trail or something and you see him and you kind of stare him down, as soon as he starts walking again, he's going to walk, unless you spook him or he gets the wind, like he's going to walk through your area pretty quickly. These sons of bitches do not. They are slow as shit. They're just hanging. They're just hanging. They're, it literally is like a, it is watching a cow eat. Like if you watch a cow eat something in the field and take a step and then just chew for 20 minutes, that's what this thing did. Just nowhere to be. Nowhere to be. Nowhere to be, no rush to be in, nothing. And so I think where I was learning and maybe John was trying to process but had trouble adapting was when that elk would start to walk, he was ready to go into full draw because it's coming like a whitetail. Not the case. Like when that elk started to walk, he took two steps and then he ate for 20 more minutes mm-hmm. and he, he just was not in a hurry at all, but he's on like, there's benches that go up this hill, clear up to where that outfitter was. He's on a bench that if he comes straight across, it'll be 33, 34 yards max. Um, and wind is perfect. Everything's good. But I mean, it's, it's rattling him. It was rattling me watching it for 45 minutes. Cause it's a, it's a, Pretty nice bull elk. It was a, I, at that time, I thought it was a six by four. It was a five by four. And I mean, he's coming. We're, we're, this, we're going to get a shot. It's going to happen. If you had to guess, you, you think like three, three year old bull? Three or four. four yeah, probably one. three, I would assume. And because I see him again, but I think probably three. Um, Just curious. Yeah, probably three year old. And, and definitely satellite bull. Didn't make a sound. Sure. Wasn't real interested in the cow calls. Um, yeah. And he hung out in this area, but it starts, you know, he's working his way, working his way. I mean, and he's damn close. And at some point, uh, I tell John, I said, Hey, listen, soon as he gets, cause I'm right over short. As soon as he gets into the hole, I'm going to tell you to draw. I'm going to cow call and he's going to stop and look right at us and you're going to kill him. He's like, what's that draw? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, just, I said, just listen to when I do that. I said, it's, I think it's 33. I said, but I want you to shoot 35 because it was uphill a little bit. I said, I want you to shoot for 35, just 35 yards right on him. 
So it's like five minutes goes by. He's getting closer. He's getting closer. It's getting a little darker, but I mean, we got planning a light. I mean, we've got half hour, 45 minutes getting closer, getting closer. Finally, like he's getting ready to step in. And I think he tried to draw once. And I said, no, 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 no. Like, I don't, don't like you can't, we're not holding. And I noticed, and I don't know, you know, fatigue, um, you know, it, it, it's a long uh, encounter. Yeah. Bull fever to a point. There was a struggle there a little bit. I didn't process it at the time because I'm trying to watch this bull to make sure he didn't see our movement. But when that bull finally steps into the hole and I said, draw, and I, mm. and he stops and looks at us, John can't get his bow back. Mm -hmm. um, How were you guys that whole time? Were you able to communicate? Could you talk, oh, dude, right talk, over, him, talk him down? Like, was he, did he calm down over time or? As much as you can. Yeah. I mean, I don't think he was like a nervous wreck by any means. I mean, hearts were pumping. Mine too. Mm -hmm. Um, it, and arrow you'd think though broadhead was shaken you know I mean, as as you would think because i mean he, here's the thing and I, I say this about whitetails i'd rather it happen fast than have to watch that thing <laughs> yeah yeah some point yeah. yeah i'd rather it be like on me and have to do it and then let the shakes fall apart with me than watching that animal work its way in for almost an hour eats at you not to mention you know john's 63 you know he's had some shoulder and back issues in the past i give him credit for wanting to kill one with a with a compound sure could have been why, you know, a crossbow may have been better in the situation. Yeah. Um, but you're holding that bow for an hour and a half, basically. From yeah. the time we got there to he's sitting there holding that bow. The whole thing is, I'm sure, is exhausting. I mean, dude, it's it's easy for somebody to say, oh, yeah, I'm going to go elk hunting. It's a whole nother thing for somebody to, like, sh strap up with all the gear and, to, you know, drive down there, you know, early mornings, you know, late nights. Yeah, and long walks. And, I mean, walks that... Especially at 63 years old. Yeah, walks that he's not used to from a whitetail side. Like, I know where he hunts, and he walks into a lot of his spots, but not walks like this. Yeah. Um. You know, and so when he goes to draw, and I realize he ain't getting it back, I, I told him, stop, 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 calm down, calm down. Because he's just looking at us. And, I mean, it's wide open. He's just looking at us. He's not sure because we probably have really good backdrop. We're like tucked, <laughs> we're like tucked into this like autumn olive bush. And I said, take your time, draw. And it just it couldn't. And then I panic because now I'm frazzled. Like all of the methodicalness up to this point has just exploded and to like, I don't know what to do at this point. Mm. In hindsight, I, sh I should have grabbed his arm and tried to get him back over the hump because he was damn close. Yeah. Uh, but like, I would have done it. My mind wasn't there at the time mm. um, to think about it. And, and you guys were right, standing right next to each other. I was right over his right shoulder. I'm going to say I've done that. Have you? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Like maybe with Corey, I might have helped him. Well, because that's not that uncommon. People people do, you know, I'm sure people have seen videos of people can't, can't get up. their go, but both they've been shooting all summer for whatever reason. They're just like. It's, it's almost part of, like it isn't target panic, but it is part of that same structure. Oh yeah. Um, What's well, this hard for somebody just sitting there listening to a podcast to imagine to put yourself in a situation where you're so overwhelmed with just um anxiety like anxiety ridden, adrenaline mm -hmm. pumping, just like, you know, twenty year tag in the making. It's it's been mid eighties. I mean, we're sweating. Like I mean, you it's just hot. you almost just shut down. Like as it's like you're almost just like paralyzed, like a paralysis by like over over, you know, yeah excitement, I guess. And so he can't get it back. And then like three seconds later, that bull kind of, you know, whips it and tucks right back to where he went and just stopped. But at that point, like game over, like, Sorry. I think I call cow called at him once or something. Um, he just wasn't sure. Mm. Uh, and just kind of worked his way off. And it, and like there becomes like the hardest part of, in my mind, kind of being the assistant there is like, what do I say to him? You know, it, it literally everything we worked to do and it's not easy i mean dude if you look at the statistics of how many people kill a bull with a bow in that county especially or in that unit especially with a compound bow it's it's <laughs> well, so so few well what can you do i mean fortunately not to uh like belittle your role in this situation but like it's not like you know you blew it Right. And it's just like, man, <laughs> yeah, you know, you, yeah. Feel, you feel bad, you know, and you almost want to yeah. like sym sympathetically ask. I did, man. I, I felt horrible. Yeah, for I'm, sure. I'm sure. And you want to, you want to ask though, like, I mean, to, for moving forward, it's the second day of the hunt or here, whatever. It's like, what, what, ha what First happened? Day. <laughs> what happened? Are you okay? Like, well, what? that's, that was kind of what, um, it was more of like, I guess like consoling, like, Hey, like, yeah. don't, don't worry about it. 
Like, well, it'll be fine. Like, but you asked, he didn't right? You know. said, hey, are, what happened? Why couldn't yeah, you get it back? Because yeah. you'd want to know. Like, that would be surprising. Yeah, I did. And I, I don't know. We, I was super frazzled at that point. Not like mad. I was just, I don't, I didn't know what the hell just happened. Interest, interesting that you guys were like that frazzled after, you know, you'd think after 45 minutes, you'd think after 15 minutes, you'd be like, okay, this, we got plenty of time here. Like, we did. And I think we calmed down. And then in, when it all came together and then it all fell apart, that just threw it over the edge. Because yeah. I think we were holding it together for so long. And then it just. Are you just sitting or standing? Standing. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing to say. didn't help. Yeah. And so I remember that that elk had left. And I remember walking out because all of a sudden now there's an elk bugling with cows back behind me to my right, which I think was the herd bull that we were in. But it's we, getting dark, right? Yeah, it's getting dark quick. So I walked out because I said, hey, I'm going to walk down here. That elk's gone. I'm going to walk down here and see if I can see where those bulls are just to get eyes on them. I walked. Maybe, Is he okay at this point? Like, Do you think he's like... No, he's he's completely upset with himself. Like, uh, in a, yeah. beside himself. Done for basically. the night. Yeah, toasted. Brain brain gone, you know, frustration, a anything, you know, this is where I say it to Nick, like, it, there was a high of high, and it went to a low of low really quick. Mm -hmm. um, as soon as I walk out, this is where my low of lows start, is that outfitter starts whistling at me straight above me. He had made a move in, probably because he heard me cow calling down there to this thing, and made a move in right above me. And was whistling like, hey, I'm up here. Well, no shit, Sherlock. Like, I get it. Like, cool. I'm down here. You're up there. Like, I don't need you to whistle at me. I see you. Mm -hmm. um, and. No shit, Sherlock. What, yeah. a, what a great thing. Yeah. Classic. And uh, Classic. so now I'm mad because like, I'm like, did he see this elk? Did we bump him up to his hunter? Like, I, you know, now I'm just like, so I come and get John. It's getting dark. I said, hey, let's, let's get out of here. And I'm, I'll be honest. It was probably pretty quiet on that walkout. Um, do you and John have a, the relationship where like yeah, you, we you, really you and I would talk about it? I'd be like, dude, are you, what yeah. happened? Are you okay? Yeah, I mean, we don't have this kind of relationship, but we have we have a pretty good relationship on it. Um, yeah, I I know that he's he's like you can ask him, like, dude, what's going on in your head? Like, what's what happened? Like, do you need help? Like, do we need to do something? Yeah, I don't think we got to that level on the walkout. Part of me, I was starting to get a little heated from the outfitter whistling at me. Uh, the other part is frankly, man, I worked really hard and like, I was disappointed for all, both of us sure. because I was like, holy, like sure. what I thought wasn't even possible. We just did it. We just did it. Yeah. And it didn't come together. So day two, right? <sighs> One. First, first evening. First evening. Okay. Yeah. First evening. So we leave, but there's gotta be that. Oh yeah, of, yeah. 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 Like, and, hey, and I didn't first think, day, like, and I did tell him, I did talk to him like, cause I was like, Hey man, I don't really think he knew what was up. Yeah. Um, he did look right at you. He looked right through <laughs> us yeah, for a little while, <laughs> but, but I think we're okay. <laughs> so, so here's where things get interesting. Cause we leave when we're, we're down at the truck, the outfitter and his, his client are down there. And so the first thing he says to me is like, man, you, you guys walk right by a cow and a calf. And I'm like, yeah, I don't care. I was hunting a bull. And he's like, oh, okay. He's like, well, I'm just saying you walk right by. And I was like, yeah, I don't give a shit. Like I was tucked in there hunting. So he didn't know that we'd seen that bull and I didn't tell him either. Could you have shot a, a cow? No. Oh, he could have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, we hadn't seen one close yet. Okay. Um, so, okay, so uh, I said, yeah, you know, we were down there and this is where it started to get a little dicey. Cause I was like, yeah, I, I said, when you stepped out, I was listening for that bull down there. He's like, oh, he's like, I didn't hear it. I was like, yeah. I was like, there's a bull and a cow calling down here. He's like, oh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't hear that. And he's up above me. He sure as hell could hear it probably better than I could have. I was like, okay. I was like, yeah. I was like, well, you know, um, we, we definitely know there's some down in there. I said, we're, we're going to head back down there tomorrow, um, and get in there. And so we leave and on the drive home, we've, I finally, John and I have that conversation, which is like, Hey, um, how much of this is like, you know, stress, anxiety, bull fever, and how much is of it, this is... You say, is it me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it me? I'm sorry. Well, it's not you, little, it's me. A little, little uh, performance issue, Jake, yeah. there. And yeah. <laughs> uh, is it I me? swear this has never happened to me before. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, I'd say the only thing you could ask in that question, in that scenario, is, is it me? Yeah, I swear <laughs> it's never happened to me before. Um, so I said, I said, uh, hey, was it, 
like you know buck fever bull fever anxiety i said or i said are you having trouble pulling your bow back um because like i said he he's had some back and neck issues in the past um and i know he he didn't when he had some of those issues he didn't bow hunt for a while you before Took like did you did you do a any, little bit like like did you ask him hey have you he shot, was shooting, have you the, shot he was shooting his bow he was shooting his bow okay. he said it we were down there friday he said he had shot it on thursday man you really gotta check yeah you know not necessarily I, mean, I, mean, I believe he did i'm not saying that he didn't i i think he did i just think that um probably how difficult it was to shoot was it was tough practicing but in that scenario nearly impossible sure uh, what, cle what clearly 660 yeah 60 probably mm -hmm. um so an out good out to 40 you know and i i mean you kind of take their word for it at this point sure so on the way home, I kind of said, hey, you know, we can't, we, we got to figure something out. This is day one. Like we can't go out tomorrow like this and just have it happen again. I said, I'm going to take your bow, tune your bow down and we're going to have to recite in. And I said, I don't want to do that, but I don't, I don't know any other choice. I think he was resistant to it at first mm -hmm. and probably more of a pride. Like I don't want to admit kind of what just happened, mm -hmm. but the other thing was when we got back to his truck, his sight was loose, like super loose, mm. uh, floppy loose. So that needed fixed anyway. Mm. Um, so, and that maybe that happened like when we were going out, I don't know. So that night I tone, I, I take it down. Probably <laughs> yeah, probably not. I, t I tighten that up. I take it down a full turn. I adjust it a little bit. I, like, I feel pretty good about that. Um, uh, next morning we go out daybreak. I set up a target 30 yards. I actually shoot it first just to make sure like, cause that last thing you want at that point is for somebody to sling an arrow two feet over the target. Cause men mentally they're shot at that point. So I shoot it first. I get it dialed in. He shoots tough. And I asked him pretty much straight up. I said, are you, are you good with that? He said, yeah, let's go. I said, I don't, I don't. No, I don't think so. I think we need to take it down another notch. Not not a full notch, but a little what bit. What do you think? Like, why do you think he was struggling? Do you think just his age? Just it's not. I don't even think it's his age. I mean, this John is. I love him to death, and I'm glad that he. I, I take a lot of pride in the fact that he really, really wanted to compound. Hundred percent. I mean, we're learning from this situation here. Yeah. So it doesn't just. Yeah, I mean. That. You know, I I've had shoulder issues. I I partially tore my rotator cuff and had oh, trouble. Oh, he said he's with had it. some shoulder and back yeah. issues. Yeah, and so I think that it's just he don't want to go to a crossbow. I think he was in pain. No, I think just weakness. Yeah, yeah. So I I think he just he doesn't want to go to a crossbow. That's that's not exciting for him. That's not what he wants to do. Um, sure. And I will say, you know, per the record check, most of these guys in archery season are killing them with crossbows in in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. The the far majority, in fact. That morning, there would have been 11 bulls checked in. Well, dude, per how long 11, it takes to draw, probably the average age is probably 60. Yeah, 11, 11 elk were killed, I think, in the first day and a half or something. 10 of them were killed by crossbow. How old was that other hunter, the client? Oh, 30. How did he draw a tag? He's I have no idea. Since he was 10? It's just random ass luck. The Hunter Podcast is brought to you by Hoyt Archery. Oh, dude, it's almost fall. You and I are both going to be in a tree stand with brand new Hoyt bows. We're going to be shooting the RX-7 carbon bow this year. I know Hoyt's also got the Venoms out, both equally smooth shooting, quiet bows. Heck yeah, man. We got a convert on our hands this year. We got a lifelong crossbow guy with a vertical bow in his hands for maybe the first time ever, a good friend of mine. And uh, we've got them all decked out with uh, the inline accessories uh, from the QAD integrated ultra rest uh, to the quiver. And also he's got the SL sidebar mount with a couple of stabilizers from Hoyt as well. So that's going to be a six shooting bow. Yeah. And Hoyt's been cool enough that anyone listening to this can save 20% on any of the soft good apparels online using the code Hunter, H-U-N-T-R, no E. Uh, and if you want to look at the latest lineup of Hoyt bows, check out your local Hoyt dealer. Get serious, get Hoyt. So yeah, we, so I cited in cause I, again, at this point, even though you slept it off, um, you don't want that, that mindset of like, you know, now you missed the target or got a multi pen side or a single, single pen. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, what's he shooting? What kind of bow? Bear. Oh, there's a problem. And a trophy ridge. <laughs> yeah. With, As a THP setup through and through. Well, the other problem <laughs> that I found when I was citing it in is no sight tape. What do you mean? No sight tape on it. You said a single pin? 
Tra- I didn't know Trophy Ridge made a sample they tape. They do, oh. yeah, but no sight tape. What was he shooting? Just the measurement tape? No, no tape. Just sighted it in and at 30 and then hold it low for 20, hold it high for 40. Okay, so he wasn't moving it. He, Correct. He just had it pinned in for 30. Yep. Okay. So I shoot in, he shoots, I lower it again. Bold strategy, God. Yeah. Resighted in. He shoots two arrows, really good. He drew fine. Let's go. Okay. Now we we wasted forty five minutes, fifty minutes probably signing in. Yeah, it was necessary. I mean, yeah, we weren't coming back. Necessary. Then. Yeah, necessary. <laughs> um, so we go in same spot. I was like, okay, we're going right to where. Basically, we had a morning spot, which is where we jumped that cow the first evening, and we had an evening spot, which was where we just saw the bull the night before. So let's go back into the morning spot. We go right back in there. This time I'm walking through. Don't smell any elk. So wind is good. We're able to get right above the bed where this cow had bedded. And there's this like little secluded pasture, like right in the middle. It looks awesome. I mean, I feel really good. And so wind is perfect. Did you get any pictures while you were down there? Yeah, I've got some. I'll show you. Um, I'd like to see some. As we're yeah. ta- Let me see them. Okay. Yeah, I'll flip through as you're kind of talking here. And uh, so we're, um, we're on this hillside and... So I'm not sure what to do or how to take it at this point. Um, it, and I, I say that from like, so like here's one of our first spots. Like that's how thick that stuff was down there. Okay. Like super thick. Like that's what the mountains mm-hmm. kind of look like down there. And then like here's like that tucked in spot where I'm at right Ooh. now. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. I got it just for it. Okay. So that's that spot we're sitting in. And uh, so based on how that bull reacted the night before, I was like, I'll tell you what, you're going to sit here tucked into this. Basically, it's an elk bed. You're going to sit in this tucked in elk bed, look down into this field. I'm going to go ten, five yards to your right, and I'm going to sit off of this tree so I can look out that way, but I'm going to try to call them through to you. So sit up there. We're there five minutes right over the hillside. Bugle goes off. I mean, loud cow bugle. And I'm like, and so I'm, I'm still at this point of like, I don't know what is the outfitter and I don't know what is a bull. Like, I, I don't know. Right. And I know where the outfitter parked. And I'm like, damn, I was like, maybe he came down that hill and he walked that bottom and he's down in this bottom. Bugle, bugle. I'm like, what the hell, man? So I cow call at it at this point because I'm like, and it was like, you know, where's the shot? He bugled back. And so I'm like, I don't know. I don't think so. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. I, I didn't even get to like look at John to say like, I'm not sure. And I'm like, here comes an elk through the thicket right next to John. Like I can hear him coming. Mm. Not fast, just slow elephant through like the woods type of thing. And I, I tell John, I'm like, hey, he's coming right here. Soon as I said that, he tried to go in the draw, full draw. I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. The, again, I think it's the... Did he get it back at least? He didn't He didn't get he to that point him. before I was like, stop. Stop. Him, yeah. stop. yeah. I, I, again, I think at this point, it's that whitetail mindset of like, here he comes. Like, I need to get ready because he's coming. That elk's not doing that. So I'm listening. I can hear him next to him. Then I kind of don't hear anything. And, you know, I kind of look at him. I was like, I don't hear him. Uh, and we're close enough that we can kind of like whisper and he's not going to hear us wind is perfect like Mm -hmm. right up over the top and i was like i don't know i'm not sure and then i look down and here comes that same bull from the night before right right in front of me like right right down the pipe and i was like right here and he he went into full draw and i i didn't know what the bull was going to do but he he locked up and when he locked up i knew he wasn't going to move and i said hey he's not He's not moving. He, he stopped. You have to let down. Wait, did he hear the draw or something? No. I just think just super cautious. He he had heard the, the cow call. So now I think he's coming and looking for a cow mm-hmm. at this point. And so John holds for a while. He did get back, draw, lets down. Kind of makes a little bit of noise to where the bull's like, you know, what was that? But not enough. And I'm like down in this grass, like tucked in. This bull's looking right through me. Like, I, I, I feel like he's looking at me, but he's not. He's looking right through me. Mm-hmm. John's tucked in around the corner enough that he doesn't see him. Um, but, I mean, it's got his nose and John's window has to be, like, touching at this point. And so it's like a stare-off for, like, five minutes. That bull was 
is bugling like hell over the hillside. Not that far either. Like to the point where at one point I'm like, oh, he may be coming. Like he, he's right down there somewhere. And this bull kind of was in the same boat. He's like, oh, is that, if he's coming, I don't, I don't want to be here when he gets up here. Cause he's going to kick my ass. Um, and so he basically, he takes a couple more steps. He's just kind of locked up. And I don't think John can see him at this point because he keeps looking at me like, what's he doing? What should I do? Where is he? You know, and I'm kind of just saying, you know, he's here. Just calm, calm down. He's, he's right here. He takes a few more steps. And I told, and maybe this is on me. I told John, I was like, okay, he's starting to walk. And as soon as I did that, he went into full draw again. And I, you know, I thought I was clear. Probably wasn't that like, hey, don't draw until I tell you to draw type of thing. But at this point, I'm like, I mean, I shot this bull three times already with my, the bow in my head. Mm. It, he has to be five inches from John being able to shoot him. And I can't see what he's looking at, right? But I told him, I said, you have to hold. Like, you have to hold. I felt like uh, Braveheart. Hold! <laughs> he's drawn. He's drawn. I was like, you got, because at this point, I think the bull is actually, I think he can see the bull because he's right there. It's, and this is 25 yards. 25 yards straight below us. And I was like, you got to hold because if he takes one more step, I think you're killing him. And at some point he looks at me like, I can't, I can't hold. I can't hold. And I was like, try, like try to hold, try to hold. And he lets down and the bull looks up. He's still not sure. He's froze up. I'm kind of confused now. Again, this is where me mentally, I fall apart on these things. Cause I'm just like, I, I don't know. Like how, how do you not see him or, how do you not pull one of these? You know, the little, like, let me just lean it to the right and yeah. see what's there. Yeah. Cause I mean, he is right there, right, right there. Right. Um, I, at one point I thought maybe he was looking too far out in the field. Cause this thing was right underneath us. Yeah, I couldn't see him. Yeah. Like I'm looking out here. I don't see him and he's right there. Is that possible still? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I, I you know, I'm not sure. Um, long story short, that bull turned around and walked right back where he came from. And I don't know how, what my reaction was at that point. I fell apart for sure. Um, you know, I, I was, but I was intrigued by the, the herd bull. At yeah. this point, I'm yeah. calling the herd bull the bugler. Plan B. Yep. Because this, this bull. The that, bugler. The bugler. We, <laughs> this bull had not made a peep the entire time. He was there probably every day. He was not bugling. Mm -hmm. He was not making any noise. That, that was that was daddy over there. Mm -hmm. He was the one who was rolling this area. Yep. And, and transparently, I never got eyes on him. Mm -hmm. um, so winds kind of switch a little bit. This bull's long gone. Like I watched him. I videotaped him. Um, oh yeah. I'd like to see him. Yeah. There's a big old T-Rex out there screaming. That's a shooter. Yeah. Go to the other way. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You shoot that thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So, I mean, you can see, so anyways, I watch this bull kind of go off, disappear. And at this point I'm like, I know where he's bedded. Like it's so strange in a day and a half, I'm confident to a 50 by 50 area. I know where this deer's bed or this elk's bedded. Mm -hmm. I just, I know where he's at. So he goes off. We move on the other side of the field. I cow call. And I think I actually bugle at this point and I get that herd bull to sound off, but he's way down in this valley below me, like way down there. Um, I think John and I actually make a move to where I'm like, Hey, let's take this hillside out and see if we can't. And I think I, that was probably step one to me breaking John. He'd probably admit that too. Uh, it wasn't, it wasn't easy terrain. Um, but I was like, I gotta, I gotta try to get eyes on this thing. And I said, also, hey, I you're knew, hunting. You just go. well, I knew where this other bull was going. And so I was like, if we can get around here and keep the wind in our favor, I said, we might be able to head him off or all of a sudden he thinks that cow moved and he comes back in. It, it was rough terrain for sure. I mean, it was pretty nasty hill, mm -hmm. climbing trees type of thing. Um, yeah, he probably didn't like, John didn't like me probably after that. But we get up to this top and that herd bull at this point had, was like two, 300 yards from us moving in our direction. He ends up shutting up at some point and we, I bump, uh, a cow out of her bed and, um, but I don't think it's him because I could hear, I heard him another time down further, but I'm like, Hey, they're down by that water hole 
where we were set up last night. I said, let's get out of here. And I said, let's get right back in there tonight. It's like one o'clock at this point. So we get out. Dang, that's a long morning, huh? Yep. So this is where it gets interesting. We get out and we we run into the outfitter. Same thing down. We're all parking at the same area. And uh, you know, I was like, I was like, hey, you heard that bull in it this morning. He's like, Oh, he's like, What which one? I was like, you know, it was like down in the bottom. He's like, Oh no, that was us. I was like, Oh, really? He's like, Yeah, he's like, We started up here, we went down in that bottom, went way up, and we were up on that side working that whole hillside, and then we worked our way back out. I was like, Holy shit, man. I was like, I was like, I, I thought it was a bull. Um, he's like, yeah, no, we were, you were cow calling and stuff down there. I was like, yeah. He's like, no, that was, that was us down there. And I was like, well, fuck. <laughs> like, okay. Um, shit, man. I was like, we were up above you. And he's like, yeah, yeah. He's like, I think I heard you a couple times. I was like, yeah, we were up there. I was like, we didn't see anything. I wasn't telling him at this point. Like I saw a bull and we were all over it. So we leave, and when we come back in, what did you think of that? Did, like, did you feel like he was yes. being truthful with yeah, you? Yeah, this is my gullible, freaking faults of like, yeah, I'm trying to like, I'm being honest with this. I yes, I have not told this guy that I'm all over a bull, but I've told him everywhere we are well, and I, and what we're you doing. You can see the opportunity for some if if somebody were wanting to like whatever miss a lead, you could say, oh, it was me. We went where you heard that where, yep. you, where you thought you heard a bull. It was me. Yeah, yeah. So no, I'm I'm. I think we're on the same page and and clearly how we're hunting this area. I think we're, which we're why, on the which same Why page. would you want to mislead? There's more than one bull in there. I'll tell you why you want to mislead in a second, but, but, um, yeah, so no, I think we're on it. So we go out, we eat lunch, John and I go back, we change, we come back out, we go right back into our hole. Dude, it's so funny at this point. I'm almost like too confident in things. Because I mean, in two hunts, we've been all over this bull. We literally, so wind switched, it's coming out of the south right now. So we get up on the hillside in the pines, basically where the bull had walked last night, we're now buried in those pines because the wind's coming in our favor this time versus it was the other way. We literally sit down. I look back at John, I'm like, smell it. He's right there. He's bedded right there. And he's like, he's like, are you sure? I'm like, a hundred percent. He's bedded right there. 10 minutes. I hear him coming. <laughs> and it's like, holy shit. It's crazy. And and I, I'm telling you, I could have put a, a whole hula hoop over the area he was bedded. I think someone was up with that bull. Like why, why? Just a just a young, I mean, three, four year old, young, uh, probably three year old, younger satellite bull, you know? Yeah. And it's just, I think those elk, I mean, those elk aren't like Western elk, you know? I mean, right. they're not getting chased around by grizzlies and wolves and shit like that. Yeah. You know, they're just cows. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'll say this at this point, I, I believe that there probably is less elk there than there used to be, but I think 100% the reason that all the locals think that there are none out, you can't That's see. Perfect, yeah. 10 years ago, they told me, they're like, dude, it was the surface of Mars. Like you could look out and it was like a little bit of grass and just all barren and be like, oh, there's a herd of 30. Mm -hmm. There's a herd of 15. Mm -hmm. There's six bulls in this field. And now now you look at, can't see shit. Yeah. There ain't nothing out there. So that there probably are less elk, but they're they're in there. So we we set up. We're perfect. I mean, to ten minutes, and it's hot. I mean, this sun is just baking us. Here he comes, working right down into the water hole again. I'm watching him, listening him go into the water hole. I said, hey, he's down at the water hole. I can see the trail he came up last night. I said, if he comes up out of the trail, twenty two yards, you're gonna kill him right there. As soon as I hear him moving up from the water hole, I hear a four wheeler, and I'm like. I'm like, what the hell? I was like, okay, that's the outfitter. Um, and it's 30 minutes before dark at this point. And John's like, is he coming down here? I was like, no, because we park. So it's an old logging road the whole way down. We block the logging road. Like you're, we, you're, you're day two, second evening, right? Day two, second evening. Okay. Yep. We, and we've hunted there the whole time. We block the logging road. That's how we access. So it's like, hey, we're here. Um, I'm listening. I'm like, I'm like, son of a bitch. I was like, somebody's coming down. So I get up and I, I work right back to where we came up. I'm basically five feet off the road. Cause I'm waiting to see like, you know, who is, cause there, we had seen the weekend before we had seen just people joy riding and stuff. You mm -hmm. could tell people just ride it. Mm -hmm. They don't care. Mm -hmm. Son of a bitch is if, if it isn't the outfitter and his client driving straight down that road. And I'm like, on a ranger, like on a, on a side by side. Yeah. Yep. Can't am. Mm hmm. And, uh, they, they get like right next to me and I'm literally going like this. Cause I hear the elk run. I'm like, and they don't even look at me. 
Yeah. Didn't see it. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, we're almost a mile back in, 20 minutes before dark, and you decide to drive your side by side the whole way down in. What? What are you what are you doing? Mm-hmm. So they shut it off and I start whistling at them. Like they don't acknowledge me. Don't even look in our direction. Like what the and I dude, I am flames at this point flames coming out so i take my bugle i bugle as loud as i fucking can i'm talking like i bet john's ears are still ringing from that thing that son of a bitch cow calls back at me like i'm an elk bugling at him you just drove by me on a side by side they're not that stupid like what the hell and so i i'm sure he heard me like i've called him a fuckhead or whatever i was pissed man i was i was on fire and so I was told John, I was like, let's go. We're out. So we walk out. And so this is where the lows of lows come in. Cause I'm, I'm just, I'm really, really toasting at this point. And, uh, we end up seeing them. And I told him, I was like, dude, you drove right by us. Like you knew we were down in there. You drove right by us. And I, I don't know, just at this point, I'm like, I don't know, maybe stupid mistake. I, th- I also know that that wasn't him saying that he hiked seven miles back in there because he just drove right down in there. Mm-hmm. So clearly it was an elk down there. He was now coming in to try to find that elk here. Mm-hmm. So like, I, I don't even remember what I said. I was blacked out mad. So we we leave at this point And I said... You talked to him. You guys had like an yeah, altercation? Yeah, brief, brief altercation. Because it was starting to rain too. Like they came down when we were packing up. And I was just like... I, he said something to me. And I made a, a shitty comment back to him about riding by us. And he was like, oh, I don't... You know, I didn't see you. It was like, you drove right by the, the fucking side by side. You do it. All, you, it's yeah. blocking the yeah. road. Yeah. I didn't know that's where you were. I was like, you saw me last night down there. You literally whistled at me. I was standing right in the same spot last night. Yeah. So this is where it kind of gets starts getting dicey, but I, I feel like I'm pretty clear. And I said I'll be that da- I'll be back in there in the morning. I said I'll be in the same spot tomorrow morning. Don't be there. Don't be. Don't there. let me see you. So we leave. We come back next morning. He's parked in his normal spot. We go the whole way around. We park in in our spot. <laughs> same thing. This time I said block the road. Like the whole road must be blocked. Block the road. We walk down. We go into our morning spot where we had the bull encounter the morning before. Super foggy. So, like can't see, like soup. Can't see anything. Probably 20, 30 minutes after being in that spot. Son of a bitch driving right down that road again. Right down into the bottom. And I'm like, I, I'm surprised there's not a forest fire from my skull exploding. Is it possible that like, is it one of the main roads or something like where, no. he, where he's like, this guy can't block the road. I got to no, get down No, it's here. clearly one of the roads that you're not allowed to drive down unless you're retrieving an animal. It's, it's oh. the purpose. The purpose of the ATVs is to get the animal. And you don't have an ATV, right? You're parked on a truck. No, we side by side up at the top where the parking area is. You do. Okay. So we come in a gate. <clears throat> it's your Ranger. Uh, no, it's, it's John's, uh, Gator, okay. John Deere Gator. Okay. So we park, there's a gate down by the main highway. Gator don't take no shit. Yeah. <laughs> There's a gate down by the main highway. We park there, right? We unload our ATVs. Then you drive what would be like the main road. It's like a gravel road up to the top of the hill. Okay. When you get up to the top of the hill, you park there, and then it's old logging roads off the top of the so hill. So just playing devil's advocate, like trying to put myself in his shoes. Mm-hmm. Like if I saw you park there, like I, th- there's no possible way that he could have just been like, well, I just, I got to get around this. Like, what's this guy doing? N- not especially after you, I told you what happened the night before. Okay. Clearly. Did you say something like, hey, I was blocking the road like to show you we were down there or no? Yeah, we'd done it the whole time. He drove by our vehicle multiple times and saw how it was and never came down. Never came down. So here he comes, drives right down there. And it's like, like I said, just soupy foggy. And I'm just mad at this point. I don't know what's happening. My brain's like exploding like... You know, I'm just like punching, punching trees. A lot of anger for day three. Oh, dude, it just, just... I'll just have some fucking ethics. Yeah. Like try not to just trample and ruin somebody else's time. We have a thousand acres where you'd been parking is literally 400 feet from where you end up. You're just lazy and won't walk down the hill. You can walk right down the hill. Mm-hmm. He won't. You're going to drive the whole way around and just spook everything and blow everybody else's hunt. Cause you're lazy. Mm-hmm. So we're sitting there 
and I heard him. I heard him cow call and bugle a couple times. I knew it was him because they just got off the damn side by side. And I'm just like, oh, God, life. Like I'm just, I'm, I'm out of my mind at this point. And it was like five minutes later, and it's, it's so funny because it's, it's dead quiet, like dead quiet. And like straight across from me, I hear like a tree fall over. And I'm like, I look at John. I literally said, if a tree falls in the wood, no one, no one's around to hear it. Does it make sound? Fuck, makes sound. Because it was so loud, dude. Yeah. I was like, holy shit. And we got a lot of rain. Like, I assume like part of the hillside came out. Sitting there like 20 more minutes. And uh, I hear his four-wheeler fire up and they leave. So I'm mad at this point, but I'm like, all right, it's nine o'clock. Like, we can figure something out here. And like, we're just, I was like, let's just sit here. So we can't really see much anyway. It's pretty foggy. Um, and probably 10, 12 minutes later, here they come back again. And I'm like, what the hell? I was like, if they didn't forget something, they shot one. They shot something. So the cool thing about Kentucky is they have uh, an instant telecheck system. So when you kill an animal, you're supposed to telecheck it before you move. It's like Teletubby com. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Basically, same. Like same thing. Same thing. Same, same. <laughs> uh, but different. Uh, <laughs> and so I'm, I'm looking at the county I'm in, an elk, and nothing had been checked in. You know, there were other other ones that have been checked in. So I'm sitting there. And it's there. live. So like right when you shoot an elk, you go on this app or whatever and check it yep, in. Check it in whenever you have service, check it in. And so nothing's been there. And I hear their thing fall, fire up again and, and leave. And yeah, at this point, John and I are like, I don't know. Maybe they did, did kill some. Maybe they didn't. I said, but yeah, it, like they need to check it in. Like it has to come on there. And like I said that and I scroll down and it pops up. Guy's name, Bull Elk Crossbow. And I was like, shit. He's like, what? I was like, one just showed up. It's the only one in the county that had been killed so far. Mm. And so I copy his name and I go to Facebook. And there's Mr. Hardware in his face on Facebook. And I was just, mm -hmm. <sighs> I don't know how many cuss words I said, but it was a lot. <laughs> I was toasted, dude. I was mad because i knew have you ever been around an angry jeremy nick i knew I don't know if you've ever seen I that i have i knew not, that not pretty yeah. i knew that he had killed <laughs> that bull too i knew he didn't kill the herd bull i knew he killed the bull that we were hunting yeah yeah because of where it was it was so killable well and and it ended up like what we heard was the bull crashing he had shot in the bull crash so it's yeah. so amazing that you didn't hear the shot didn't hear the shot um you'd think if you heard him crash you'd have heard him yeah I shoot. know exactly where, so we ended up going back down there. So long story short, like I didn't run in, we got out of there and they were already gone. Um, bull was already gone. We ran into a guy who said, yeah, I saw the bull looked like a five by four. I was like, yeah, it's probably the bull that we, we saw. And, um, so we left and I said, Hey, we, uh, I said, he probably killed that bull, oh, but we need to go down to where the herd bull's been down way in the bottom. Like we're talking two mile walk this time. Um, that's the only thing that I, that makes sense to like get down there. Yeah. So we get down there pretty early. We walk <laughs> way down in the bottom. Uh, I can see where his, the tracks were and I, we flushed a bunch of buzzards and I mean, did he kill that bull 120 yards from where we were sitting? Mm -hmm. He shot it probably at 80 yards. I would assume on the hillside. <laughs> And it died about 120 yards from from where we were sitting. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, yeah, as I well, when I saw like the remnants and gut pile, I was pretty pretty pissed as well. Were there um, actual trees out there? Like, yeah, okay, oh yeah, there was oaks and stuff on those hillsides and things. Um, yeah, chestnut oaks. That's what I was. I was actually hunting some of the acorns there, thinking those elk were were working that area. Yeah. So yeah, kind of seeing the scene of where it was also was just a huge like bitter because i mean you just knew there's this dude like probably resting on this side by side with a four by 12 scope you know <laughs> popping this thing at 90 yards. he told me you'd shoot 100 yards with that w raven oh yeah they'll go 120 <laughs> yeah i just wanted to rip one of those things right out of his face oh man and uh so yeah at this point jeremy's in the low of lows at this point like i'm i'm deep but like it's um I've got a little bit of like hope of like, okay, like they're out of here now. We've got this area. Um, How's John responding to all this? Like, is he, uh, John at does this he get point, fired up? Is he just kind of along for the ride? Well, or? John at this point is worried that 
because he sees angry Jeremy. Yeah. And so yeah, just, like, you, just the kids just you sit in the back and you're just like, <laughs> yeah, he's he's worried at this point that I'm mad at him, which I'm not. Um, not mad. Yeah. Daddy didn't mean to hit mommy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I, I crushed I crushed some uh, several lunch beers. Uh, oh, yeah. I crushed several, yeah. several lunch beers, you know, try to mellow just out. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he's he's. He's hoping that I'm not mad at him, which I'm not. I'm just mad at just like how this whole thing went down, <clears throat> especially because uh, at this point I realized that the the outfitter played me. Yeah, I had been basically very honest and open about everything except for like when I actually were we were on the bowl, and this dude had lied completely mm. the whole time, mm. full of shit the entire time, uh, and didn't care. Didn't care if he screwed up our hunts. All that mattered was his client killed something, which I later found out that those guys were charging a $4,000 flat fee, no room and board, just to, to meet up with you and take you out. 4000 bucks. If they killed a bull, it was a $2,000 trophy fee, and if they killed a cow, it was a $1,000 trophy fee. Mm. So you're telling me that those guys won't do anything to kill a bull or a cow. Absolutely. It's a lot money. of money in eastern Kentucky. Sure. Um, so, yeah, I'm just furious at this guy that he... And it, you know... We start talking to some people, and everybody's like, "Oh yeah, I know who you're talking about," and he's a piece of shit. Mm. Classic. Did you consider going over? Like when you heard, when you figured they had shot something, did you think like, "Hey, we'll go, let's go over and see what they shot"? Yeah, um, I did. But then I was thinking when they went back to the truck, because that was that's what they did. Is they probably yeah went back to the truck and then they came back. I was thinking that they would have checked it in or something at the truck because they it sounded like they had been down there and then they left like they maybe quartered some of it out and then came back for the rest. Um, mm -hmm. I thought it would show up on the the thing. So when they came back, first of all, I didn't think they were going to drive down there at first. I thought, oh, they they're going to hunt somewhere else up there. I thought they went. There's yeah. a couple other logging yeah, roads yeah. that kind of went out. Um, and then when I heard them coming down, I was just like, what the, what are you doing? Like, what the hell is going on? And that's why I'm sitting there refreshing. I was like that. Like, I don't know if it killed anything. By the time I would have got out there, I mean, it, it was thick and gnarly. I mean, it would have taken me a while to get out there, even if I was hauling ass, um, to get out to the road that they were coming back up. Mm. Um, uh, probably best that I didn't see them. Sure. Because that would have not, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it wouldn't have been great. Um, I'd probably have been shot with a raven, would be my guess. Um, <laughs> Can you imagine, after all the shit we've done? The talked, ironic. That'd be the way to go. <laughs> so shot ironic. by a raven. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> um, That's poetic. Yeah, it been poetic justice there. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so they're gone. We go down there. Um, I do see a really nice eight-point in velvet. Uh, we, we don't see an elk. We don't hear an elk. We don't see an elk. We see a bunch of whitetail. Nothing. Um, and that's a long walk out. Then, at, at, you know, when it gets dark, I'm like, hey, let's go. So we walk out the whole way. And um, John is pretty defeated at this point. The Hunter Podcast is brought to you by Muddy and Stealth Cam Trail Cameras. Cell cams, cell cams, cell cams. What an evolution the industry has seen. And we've experienced personally over the past five, ten, you know, whatever. Cameras were invented, right? It's like, man, it's totally changed the way that we inventory deer, pattern deer, and ultimately the decisions that we make when we're going out to hunt. They're a serious piece of the puzzle. And, and uh, you know, that information is invaluable for us. We trust the Muddy and Stealth Cams, you know, together to be able to, to collect any of that information. Yeah, I mean, as an admitted trail cam addict, you know, I've definitely been guilty of of under hunting places or relying too heavily on that information that's come in that said it's an invaluable tool to the overall management plan and strategy that i have for my own properties or even hunting public land it doesn't yeah. matter we have a finite amount of time in going out and hunting so when you and i are after a particular class or quality of deer usually a mature buck we can't waste time hunting an area where that deer doesn't exist. And those cell cams provide that information that allow us to spend the time in the area with the highest chance to accomplish our goals. I say it all the time, man. They can't kill them if they're not there. That's it. So right now, any of our listeners can use uh, code HUNTER20 to get 20% off either muddy or stealth cameras. Uh, we're certainly going to be taking advantage of that, and we hope you guys do too. Yep, check out Stealth Cam and Muddy. Where are you guys um, eating and stuff? Where are, you, where are you staying and where are you eating? So we're staying in an Airbnb about... 35 minutes away. Okay. It's a nice, nice yeah, bed, really nice Airbnb. Yep. Okay. Yep. And, uh, food, like you guys oh, went we grocery found a, shopping and no, well we did, we had some, we had sandwiches and stuff, but we found this really nice barbecue place mm. five minutes from where we were hunting. Mm -hmm. So we, we were frequent customers there. Yeah. 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 Crushing beers, watching football, uh, eating yeah. wings, what pizza. Was the, what was the beer of choice on this trip? Blue Moon. 
Play a moon. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There you go. It's nice. Yeah, yeah. Trying to watch my figure. It had to have an orange in it. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Healthy. Healthy. So, yeah. So, you know, Vitamin we were. C. Yeah. And, so, and they had really good food. Um, can't remember what it was called, honestly, but a great, great place. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, we're, we're in decent spirits, but walking out, like, uh, he had put, put some miles on, like I was ready to go, man. I would have humped those Hills as long as I needed to. He was feeling it at this point, you know, and, and I think emotionally drained from the chances that he had and then them killing that. Um, I think physically drained because he had walked and been in some stuff that he wasn't used to by any means. Um, so the next, that was on Sunday and then, um, Monday, Monday morning, they killed that Monday evening. We walk out Tuesday and Wednesday are supposed to be rainy. And so on the way home Monday, he's kind of like, I'm done. Uh, and we have two weeks to hunt. I mean, not that we had like, he had a week off. Um, but the, the archery season was two weeks. He's like, I'm done. You know, I'm just, I'm tired. Yeah, I'm worn out. Um, cause I was going to lay low for the rain days. Um, probably, you know, or play the breaks. Um, and I was like, well, we have to return this key anyways. Like we need, we have to go back down to the, uh, the town anyways to return this key. I was like, we might as well hunt in the morning and uh, at least check out a couple of the other areas up there and just, you know, see if we hear a bull or anything. It was beautiful the next morning too. And so we went down there and uh, we didn't hear shit. We walked a big ridge <laughs> and I, dude, I bugled my balls off the whole time because nobody was out there. So mm -hmm. um, I bugled a lot. <clears throat> Actually on Monday, I checked out a couple new ridges. I walked them out myself where I thought that herd bull was. You think that would give you like new. Yeah. Just defeated. New, new strength that like you have the whole place to yourself. And it's up now. to him, right? I don't have a tag. It's, you know, whatever he wants to do. Sure. I'm, I'm there as the assistant. Um, you know, I think that, uh, I, you know, I don't know. He was very appreciative of the hunt. I think he, um, it was probably way more than he could have expected. Um, Frankly, for me, it was like, you know, we could have ended up in that same position and not have seen an elk track if we were hunting the other place. Mm -hmm. So one thing I can say about older guys, you know, the, the older you get, the more you are very aware of your limits. Yep. You know, yep. and so like we want to, as young guys, we want to keep pushing, right? We'll, mm -hmm. we'll overexert ourselves till we, mm -hmm. you know, lose a finger or, you know, get, get hurt, you know, you get hurt. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, you got to admire that about the older guys. They, they know where the limits are. Yeah. So you kind of got to listen to um, You know, I look at it as like, well, maybe there's other chances. There's a herd bull in there for sure. I never did lay eyes That'd on it. That'd keep them. me going. I never laid but eyes on the herd bull. I mean, there. we had seen basically two cows. At one point I did see, it was, uh, I think it was the night that he, I don't know if there's, it must've been the night that he had that opportunity the first night, or it could have been the night that guy drove in. I saw like a group of elk, like three or four, which is the most I had seen. And I'm assuming that had the herd bull in it or he was nearby. Uh, but it was super dark. They went right up to where our morning spot was. Like mm -hmm. they were in that area. So I, you know, I don't know. Um, but yeah, he just, I think he experienced everything he wanted to experience with it. Um, sure. Like if we would have killed one, I mean, he, if he, if he shot a crossbow, we would have killed one first evening. So you guys hunted for only four days in a, um, in a morning, three days in a morning, Saturday, Sunday, Monday in the morning. Pretty quick. Yeah. That's a, that's a lot that transpired in three days. Yeah. I mean, emotionally, I was shot <clears throat> as well. Um, wow. It's hard for me to wrap my mind around why that was so, like, to, you know, did it seem like the guy was, like, following you around? Or, like, it just seemed like you couldn't get away from He was him. going to the same spot every day, um, which he was not in the game to, like, be in bow range. But where he was, he was in the game to try to see everything like see all the elk mm -hmm. and i guess make a move from there then again i don't know like his client would shoot 100 yards with that thing so maybe he could have shot off of that top rock he was sitting in a rock that i ended up going to on monday morning and called off of and i mean i could see a long way saw a bunch of whitetail when i was up there but like dude i wouldn't have been able to make a, and again i don't know because i'm i'm thinking of me bow hunting and he's thinking of him with a a cross gun Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right Nick mm -hmm. 
So, like, you know, I don't know. Maybe he would launch one off there. Mm -hmm. Um, But he went to the same spot every day. And if he didn't hear them or see them, they didn't do anything. Um, And once he knew where those elk were and he knew that we were getting aggressive on them, that's when I think he felt threatened and had to get down in there. And he just drove down in there. Mm. And and maybe I'm naive too. Maybe those elk don't give a shit about the side by side. But the fact is, is that wasn't legal on that property to mm. do what he did. Mm. Um, you yeah. t- you called me. I called. You, I don't know. We we ho- we hooked up there at some point. It was right after that. And you were telling me it was it was what Monday happened. Monday afternoon. And I asked you. I said, "Is it illegal? Like you know, he's breaking the law." And I was like, "Call Gay Morton." I did. Yeah. Well, that's what you said. You're like, "Yeah, they're out of town. They're on vacation or something." Yeah. I was yeah. like, for the opener of elk season? Both of them. Two of the, two of the county wardens are, were out. I wrote my other buddy who's a game warden, and I said, listen, I, you know, do a, do with this information what you want. Um, I'm not looking to, like, ruin anybody's day. I said, it, it sucked. It was not fair, but, you know, life isn't either. So mm-hmm. I said, take it for what it's worth. And he's like, yeah, they're just pieces of shit. They don't care. Yeah. Meaning the outfitter groups. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is why I have a bitter taste in it. I do have a bitter taste that they also were allowing them to guide on public land. Not even in my case, but in other public lands. It's like, dude, how are these people allowed to make money off a of public resource? I but don't... it's just private land, right? But it's classified. It's a regulated Correct. area. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can, yeah. Can they guide on true public land? Yeah. They can. Yeah, he could have taken them to a, a wildlife management area in that unit and guided them. Hmm. That, that's a weird we've touched on that before like because most of the guides in colorado and stuff that's public land but there's there's way more of it i mm-hmm. i feel and they pay a permit fee to do so absolutely i don't think these guys do oh yeah that doesn't seem right interesting so yeah so we <laughs> if, you know essentially tuesday morning it wrapped up and uh i ended up going up to to, to the farm which is like an hour and a half away and like walking my anger out a couple hills but um yeah, I don't, I don't know. A lot, I, of, a lot of anger on this trip. Well, I mean, dude, first of all, it was awesome. It it bit me with the elk bug uh, because I went into it a complete newbie. I couldn't even blow a, a cow elk call. I'll throw an old school uh, Midwest Vital reference at you. You were like Peruka with an oh. uh, angry sportsman rate yeah. Uh, level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, completely like got me. Like, uh, dude, by the time we were on the last day, I was bugling and I was cow calling. I felt good, man. I felt like I could I felt like I could work one in pretty well. Um, so I love that aspect. It, I love spending that time. That That's my terrain, like that Eastern Kentucky, like heavy woodland type stuff. That's what I grew up hunting in, in like strip mines of Pennsylvania and stuff. So that, that's kind of my go-to. Um, we, we had kind of just had several conversations here at the podcast about woodsmanship and stuff. Mm-hmm. And dude, that whole first day and a half, man, it was just gut. Reading it. Gut instinct, reading it, smelling it, playing Left the right, wind. Top to bottom. Thermals. Man, I was just... And I think that was what was so exhausting is I was so on point for like a day and a half yeah. that when it just didn't happen and then that guy killed it the next day, I just... Just to get beat out ultimately by a side-by-side on a crossbow probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I didn't feel great. No, because I was, I was like... Therein lies, though, the death of uh, woodman, you know, woodsmanship. Yeah, because I was in my element. Yeah, I mean, here, here are two guys that didn't know anything about elk hunting that came in that put the plan together and in the first evening and i looked there were like i think there were like 30 or so elk that were killed in uh kentucky by tuesday only one of those had been killed on open land meaning a a, an area or public land with a compound bow um everything else was basically private land crossbow and like one or two private land or or public land crossbows Mm -hmm. um so yeah, I I spent a lot of time kind of that that afternoon into the next day looking at the statistics and stuff. Um, and I don't know, it, guys have asked me since that because I've talked to a bunch of people about the elk hunt and um, even some guys who have some tags here later in the season. I know a couple guys who have elk tags here for gun season coming up. And um, uh, they for sure over harvested. Um, from about 2009 to 2014 or 15, they were killing, you know, 500 to 600 cows and 200 plus bulls a year. I don't know why. Not to mention, and this is no disrespect to that area, there's a lot of poaching and other shit going on there. It's backwoods eastern Kentucky. Mm. Um, so, I mean, they, they mowed a lot of these elk out. 
Um, I don't know why. Is that a did that hurt or like were they brought in? Yes. They yeah, okay. They don't yep. they don't live there. No, nope. historically they had, but they were brought in. Uh Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation was a big part of that. Um they were spending I don't know what it was, like a million plus dollars a year bringing in elk from out west into there. Um and I mean they thrived. Uh, and they killed some big bulls. In fact, somebody found a 430 dead or something like that. Wow. Yeah, giants. Um, and uh, yeah, the habitat has changed, and I, d- I do believe that's a lot of the reason the elk aren't gone. They're there. They just aren't visible anymore or as visible. Um, but they for sure harvested way too many. And since then, it's fallen off a lot. Like the, the number of tags issued in the harvest success is like, it used to be 90%, and it's like 50, 60% now. Mm. Um, so I don't, I don't understand. I, that's a great question for somebody that's involved with the department of like, <clears throat> you know, was it habitat? Like, did they get out of control too fast? Was it political? Like, were they in backyards and causing vehicle accidents that they're like, Hey, we gotta, we gotta keep these in better check. I, I don't know what that answer is, but, um, it's kind of sad because you can, we were in, um, we were in this area of like hazard County and stuff, which is like deep Eastern Kentucky. Um, great people, but Man, at one point you could tell those people took pride in the elk in the area, and they're like, "Yeah, it was cool." And this, and like everybody's just defeated about it, um, that they're just like, "Yeah, we don't see them; they're not there," um, you know. And and so, uh, such a unique ability to hunt in there and to to do that kind of stuff and to be in bugling. The the thing that still kind of bugs me too is like I I'm still not a hundred percent sure when it was bugle and when it was him. <laughs> which kind of bugs me a little bit. Like it, it, you know, I know a couple of them were for sure, but it, like, there's always that thing in the back of your mind. It's like, well, was it, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so never know. Yeah. You'll never know. So, but really cool area. I reached out to a few guys on, we had this like, uh, elk hunting group and, or if anybody's listening and has a tag, uh, for unit four, give me a call. Um, like I, I'd be happy to help people, Let not that, I mean, the bull that I was trying to kill is dead. So, but other oh, than that, bull left in there. there is a herd bull up in there. Uh, and it, it's great territory. It's cool. It's rugged. Um, but yeah, man, it was a great experience. It, you know, disappointing on, on kind of how it ended up. If, if that had been harvested, like even if those guys would have walked in and went down in there and, and cut us off. I would have had at least a little bit more respect than the drive down in there. Mm-hmm. Um, especially cause we walked into there. So like that's the, and you know, he knew we were down there. So that, that doesn't, uh, it, it's driven by money, I guess is what I'm getting at is the fact that he needed that guy to shoot something in order to make more money. And so he'll do whatever it takes to make that. If that means cutting us off, I wouldn't be surprised if that dude has bait pals around too, cause it's legal to feed deer in Kentucky. I'm sure he's got bait pals for elk too. Mm-hmm. Uh, who's going to find them? Sure. You know, it'd stick his balls in there. Nobody's looking. Sure. Um, probably why he was up in the same spot every time. There's probably a big bait pal up there. Um, cause there was no elk up there ever where he parked. Yeah. Um, so it, you know, it just, those are the things that kind of r- ruined the experience a little bit. Um, the positives were, man, I felt sharper than I ever had in the woods Man, I was just, I was on point. I've, I was, I couldn't believe that I like, pretty much made it happen yeah put them on a bullet 30 yards the first night couldn't believe it i like we went in there i told emily before we left because you know it's her uncle this so john is the one who really got emily into hunting growing up so her like entire life of hunting and and being a deer biologist and stuff was kind of funneled out of her uncle um her dad wasn't really in the picture her uncle was was in was the person in the picture for her Mm. um and so you know john had called me or called Emily when he got drawn in, uh, what was that, May or June, something like that. And um, he basically said, you know, he didn't really have the time and resources to do it. Um, so he just wasn't going to, he wasn't going to hunt the tag. And, you know, I know what he's done for Emily and, and subsequently me. And so, you know, I was like, N- he's hunting. Like, I'll, I'll take him. I'll figure it out. We'll do it together. Still work. Yep. Works yeah. at Napa. Okay. Um, yeah. General manager at Napa. And, um, but yeah, so, you know, he wasn't even going to do it, but like, I know this meant a lot to him. Um, like I said, tag of a lifetime. And I know what he's done for Emily to, to develop her passion for hunting and for wildlife and for deer. And so, you know, it was kind of my thanks back to him to, to get him out to do that. And, sure. 
yeah, I mean, I, I wish we were sitting here and I could lift up a five by four rack and say, Hey, look what we did. But, um, there's definitely some images that won't leave my head for a while. Um, you know, was, and I'm sure for him, you know, experience of a lifetime on it, but I, you know, I think we talk about it often. Those are some of the things that, uh, keep you coming back. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe not to Kentucky, but maybe somewhere else for elk or whatever, but, um, those are tough, man. <clears throat> Honestly, it's, it's hard to have a bad experience when in a, in a truly wild environment. It's, it's when you introduce other people. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, it seems like that's, you know, you, you, you want to go hunting, you want to go into a wild space to, to get away from, from that. Um, and it's just a shame that sometimes, you know, there's just, there's only so much to go around Then it's, you know, it's sometimes it's, uh, when you're ch chasing a, a specific, like a, a, a herd type animal like that, you know, and you have multiple people in the same area, yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's hard not to, you know, to have, have some encounters like that. But. Well, and it's crazy. We talk about it all the time. It's a limited resource. Like, I don't know. I, I would assume there was a, at least one more bull in there. Probably. I mean, this guy held up pretty far from the, the herd. So I would assume there was a better bull that was another satellite bull. It just seems like likely because mm -hmm. this guy stayed in the same spot the whole time. Basically, I would assume where this herd bull was, there was a closer satellite bull to that. Yeah. You would think so. Yeah. Again, I'm naive to elk, so mm. I don't know. <coughs> but yeah, that, I mean, that's it in a nutshell. I mean, if you've heard that that's cool it's pretty wild pretty wild uh experience Appreciate yeah if you hear me talk about that. it up until this podcast it's um it's pretty defeated it's like yeah i haven't seen shit like we're we're new and so um i mean we were in them which is all i could ask for we talk about it all the time i mean if i'm in the game it's a 90 percent win already yep um it's just that 10 percent, and and you know i mean we were every bit of 99 percent in the game in terms of it should have happened would have happened could have happened type of thing um, yeah, you got to feel for John on that too. I know that that'll stick with him. You know, he's probably just, the, yeah, the fact that the, in that moment he wasn't able to, I will say this though about it is, um, you know, obviously not your traditional ant elk, elk camp. Cause we're saying in a, you know, an Airbnb mm -hmm. and stuff, but, um, definitely some good camaraderie around it in terms of how, you know, we got to spend time together and do stuff and, you know, I may take it harder just cause I'm competitive. That that's probably why I was super pissed with the outfitters. Like, I'm competitive. I, I, I was all over it and I lost, mm. right. You know, call me sore loser. Mm. Um, uh, he, maybe he cheated his way to it, but I still lost. Mm. Um, and I think John took it more in the, probably the better light of man, what an experience mm -hmm. like to, to be able to be out here in this area and see the sunrise and hear the bugles um, which I did S too. Sometimes ignorance is bliss in that regard. Yeah, know? which I did too. Like I really enjoyed that part of it. Um, but but it was the the way that we lost, basically. Yeah, right. Um, that you know <laughs> didn't sit well. So it is what it is. But um, cool experience. Uh, you know, obviously appreciate the Kentucky Department having this. Um, you know, hopefully the new management plan they they start to really focus in on these elk and. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, they've, they've got a bunch of gun hunts coming up and youth hunts and things like that. Um, you know, I, I don't necessarily say that they shouldn't allow crossbows in those seasons, but they're the, the majority of the harvest are by them. Um, which I don't know if they're, uh, accounting for or not. Um, I would assume that success would be way lower if it was all compounds and recurves and stuff. It doesn't sound like it. Sound like it, it. It is lower, even though despite a higher crossbow, which you know, probably speaks more to the herd, which mm -hmm. is what we're covering. But, mm -hmm. or, or also the the habitat sounds like yep. it was way thicker than it used to be. But mm -hmm. would you go back? Oh yeah, I would never guide again though. I'm not cut out for that. Okay. Yeah, I guide you if I needed to. Uh huh. But like I'm just I'm not uh like I guide a family member. But like if somebody called me up and said, hey dude, like would you come guide? Like I enjoyed it. But I'm also, I'm a control freak. Yeah. So when like it all comes together and it can't happen, I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. That's the ultimate like worst case scenario for you. Yeah. And, and listen, I've had it all come together for me and I've screwed it up. I get that. That's one thing. Um, but yeah, it's, it's the out of control stuff. And it's also that, you know, transparently it, for John and, and for a lot of people, like I, I know my limits, but I don't know your limits. Dude, it's hard hunting with other people. So I just go, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm running and gunning. 
you know, and he got better at it. He would have to tell me to stop and hold up. Yeah. Cause yeah. otherwise I'm gone. I'm, I'm on them. I'm, I'm yeah. like, we're rolling yeah. man. we got to move. We got to yeah. move. Yeah. Um, we've done that before with mule deer and stuff mm. and like, um, you know, pulling the Coltons behind us. And it's like, dude, you got to keep up with me. Cause I just can't, you know, it's a different mindset. Like I'm not even thinking as I'm moving. I just know what I have yeah. to do. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, I would love to go back. I'll, I've put in, um, Five years, four years, five years, six years, something like that. How did how did you feel about like the uh, elk versus deer? Like it's your first elk hunt. Yes. Yeah, and I know you weren't hunting, but essentially you were. How did you feel like? Did you're like I really like this? Or oh yeah, it's like, I oh, loved it. You're like, oh, this is different, or it's yeah, I guess you're. Yeah, I made. I, I'm bit. I've got the bug okay. for sure. Um, yeah, I liked it a lot uh, because it felt muley to me. Like I, it was, it wasn't. Spot how would you compare it to a muley hunt? about the same i i like the take into the consideration if i knew which vocalizations were the elk versus the outfitter sure. i would have been i would have been i've already well, had an elk different hunt hunts, though i mean because the, the uh, well and i, I guess i love the tr <laughs> to the terrain challenge um i liked the ability to move and play the wind yeah, and thermals that's huge which is why i like the muley side too yeah whereas the whitetail side you're just you're there yeah. you're confined yeah um, I really like moving and reading sign. Me too. Me too. Uh, it, it, it was so funny because we had been talking about woodsmanship and like, you know, not that you, you need it, but like in the whitetail side, like, I don't know. I mean, on occasion I use my woodsmanship, but you know, I know my properties enough where, mm -hmm. you know, unless it's a new area or I'm trying to hunt a buck that's acting not like he should, like, I don't know, I don't have to use it that often. It was all woodsmanship there, and I loved it. It put me right back where I wanted to be. So, speak, speaking of that, like diving into new stuff, <clears throat> I, I'm I'm trying to early on here prepare my, uh, you know, build up my optimism for what it seems like Kansas is turning into, uh, which for us sounds like a lot of hard, <laughs> lot of hard work, a lot of diving into unknown, public, a lot of woodsmanship, public for the most part. So, yeah, I, a lot of woodsmanship. So, I'm kind, I'm kind of excited for that because you know Ohio and like our farms, we've got pretty pretty dialed in. Yeah, we know. Um, Illinois will be new, although we, we've got, uh, you know, we've got some, yeah, not a lot of things you can do there. I mean, that's what I loved about this is I had a thousand acres. Yes. There was another guy there. We had a thousand acres. Just go, man. Just hunt, just yeah. read sign, find them. So I'm kind of looking forward to that in Kansas. You know, we're going to just, let's just put boots on, like, yeah. put, put the dads in known spots and you and I will branch off. We covered a lot. Figure them out. I, you know, John sat up in a couple spots. He walked most of it with me. There were a few things that I walked big ridges out, uh, and did some call in and I walked in some other areas that, that he wasn't on, but, um, I mean, we covered some major ground, um, you know, reading the sign, understanding the thermals. I, I will say the one thing I think was really cool, and it, it didn't click till later, like where we had kind of smelled the elk, where we had seen the elk, um, is uh, I was I was tossing milkweed like it was going out of style for thermals and uh, stuff because yeah. the wind was super swirly. I mean, it's a big bull, basically. Mm -hmm. and uh, But that bull has a lot of cuts and terrain in it. So, like, I could watch how that thermal and wind was playing, and then, like, when I would walk, I'm like, man, they should be bedded. Yep, there they are, right there. Like, it just, they were doing what I thought they would do for leeward ridges and wind and thermals. Yeah. And then when the wind would switch, we'd start to move, and I'm like, they're not there anymore because the wind switched. They moved, too. Mm. Um, so it was, kind of, it was kind of a cool chess match to really hone in on that. And that's tough for whitetails because you're coming into your spot, and you're like, okay, it's going this way. I need to sit here but you're not going to move or adapt or anything. it's just, you're there and you're hoping they're there. Mm -hmm. Uh, these elk moved a lot more throughout the day than, than I thought, like even where I thought they were going, you know, through the middle heat of the day, when I would come back two hours later, they had shifted pretty far. Mm -hmm. Um, so they were, they were pretty on the move, but it was, it was the rut. I mean, they were, they were rutting. They're rutting. They're rutting. And, um, but yeah, as, as the dads would say, they're yeah, rutting. They're rutting. <laughs> but yeah, the woodsmanship <laughs> thing was really, really cool, man. It felt great to kind of get back to those roots of just sign thermals and just gut, gut instincts. Yeah. Um, and for it to all come together like it did. Yeah. I mean, besides throwing an arrow, that's, that's the best as you're going to get. I killed one multiple times in my head though, for the yeah. record. Pretty cool, man. Um, Very cool. So yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I, I hope people don't listen to this and and take the take the outfitter thing too far. Um, you know, I know not all outfitters are like that. It's just a shame that that's how that had to go. 
Um, it's also a shame that, as again, guilty as charged, but that I I was gullible, uh, and that I was telling that you know basically telling him everything he needed to know to to get a better advantage on it. Dude, that dynamic, that dynamic of hunters that meet at the truck is one that like you can never understand unless I guess unless you experience it. But even more so, you know, o- over time, like even since I was a kid, watching my dad interact, watching we've had interactions mm-hmm. you know it's funny how you have to go into those like almost super cautiously because like you don't know who you're dealing with you don't know what their intentions are and i'm too are. open man we, we, you and i are both guilty of that like i'll just go up and shake his hand and start talking and i know where to protect myself well, but well and you know what i i'm confident that i'll outwork just about anybody so it's like it's it's the same principle where it's like i'm more than happy we're happy to share tactics and like you know there's there's no like secrets as to what we do but yeah. even, even on a business front because it's just i just know i'm gonna outwork you and I, maybe that's Maybe that's yeah, those. and I think the uh, the downfall for that is like I made it very clear, like, hey, we're just we're going to be very open. It's just two of us, like, yeah. I, and and the problem why is why wouldn't you be right? Well, the problem is he was in it for money. I wasn't. He thought I was. It took him two days to realize that I wasn't a guide. Oh, and he's like, well, he's like, who you guide with? I'm like, that's my uncle, <laughs> and he's like, what? I was like, yeah, that's my uncle. He's like, you're not a guide down here. It's like. No, I'm an assistant. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, and I, maybe that set him off, like because it was right around that time that he started to really ambush where we were hunting. Um, I thought he could walk over at that point because I wasn't part of the guide service and I wouldn't rat on him out, and because they have an organization. Mm. Um, <laughs> so maybe he thought like while that was in place, so maybe that was my fault for saying that I wasn't. Um, but how would you know? I mean. Yeah, all in hindsight, you know, but uh, yeah, cool, cool experience. Um, if anybody is hunting down there um, for elk here, whether you've still got an archer tag or if you're doing the gun season or something, you know, hit me up. i um, happy to at least give you some insight on, even if it's not our unit, like what we got into and kind of how we got on them. But uh, yeah, cool, cool stuff. Right on. Good way to start the, start the year. Cool, man. That's so. two, two bonus episodes, two weeks in a row, so... Well, we should be getting rolling. I, we talked about it. I will be, uh, by the time this airs, I will have hunted Kentucky. I've got a pretty good eight point I'm going after. Yeah. Um, and then that's it, the one that was there in daylight at, yep, the other day. He's been left. there quite a bit. And then, uh, this is there in the 28th ish. Uh, yeah. 28th. So like in two days, it's opening day mm-hmm. in Ohio. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next day would be in Illinois and in Pennsylvania. The only thing that's like keeping me from feeling really confident is it looks like we got like a north northeast wind. I know that you can't know that far out, but mm-hmm. um, they're like a we got a low pressure system blowing through next like Tuesday, Wednesday. Hopefully, some so rain. So you're playing. You'll be in Ohio. See, I don't know what I'm gonna do because my Ohio farm is getting cut. Like when the, people are listening to this, oh, yeah. there's logs Ohio. logs falling on my Ohio. Why farm. are you gonna go to Illinois? No. <laughs> no, I'll hunt. Uh, I'll probably hunt Pennsylvania. I'll, I figure, like, we don't have, but I figure mid October, we'll we, you, we'll probably start getting an itch. We'll start feeling yeah, like. Yeah, I mean, we really only have one or two deer that we would shoot right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we got a lot of corns lot just of coming back down. and watching, a lot of just waiting. Yeah. Maybe, no. we'll, maybe we'll see a front coming in. I, I'd imagine it'll be a short trip, right? We'll probably go out and say, hey, let's, let's go out for three days. Yep. Come back. Yeah, maybe go back if we have to. And yeah, no, I'll I'll hunt Pennsylvania, uh, maybe with the kids if they want to get back. We've got some good bucks showing up behind the house early this year, which is kind of encouraging. Um, nice. And then you know I I'll have to see. I I've never hunted a property that's been being timbered. Uh, there's really there's only a, one skitter <laughs> on there. You're going on to hang on pretty tight when they start laying into your tree. Do not hang in any blue mark trees, <laughs> Madison. <laughs> love that. Um, but yeah, so I don't know, like I, I'm expanding. We'll talk about this on probably an Ibotta farm coming up here. I'm expanding that farm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if they're on the one side of the farm, I may be able to go and hunt some of the other oak bottoms and flats. Yeah. Um, them deer don't care. I don't have it. I talk about woodsmanship. I don't have any, I have like no cameras running there. Just, it's just cause I didn't plan on anything cause I thought they'd be cutting already. So it's going to mm-hmm. kind of just wing her in there. Read the sign, hang the stand, shoot the deer. Seems simple enough, Eat the right? meat. Set neck. Mount the horns. Cool. Uh, well, we appreciate everybody listening to this bonus episode for Kentucky Elk. And, uh, man, it it's here. Season's here. We're in it. We're rolling, buddy. One dead. One down. And a whole season to go. I wonder if there's a lot of people saying, these guys just do a bunch of talking. 
And I know for a fact there's some guys out there that think that we just, uh, well, not just that, but they think that we just do the podcast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like oh, some like, guys have been like, it? oh, it must be nice to just sit around and do the podcast. It's like, no, no, no. <laughs> what? Yeah. No, we yeah. just one day a week we sit down and we get a chance to do that. But there yeah, buddy, one down, one North Dakota, 160. There you go, man. All right, we'll catch everybody next week. Later. It's take me. Oh.